everybody. I'm assuming we're going live on quite a few um, platforms at the moment. Um, and that would be thanks to Joe Manji Booth, who's been helping me here in New Zealand and getting it all um, hooked up. And we are really honoured to be live streamed on the Unity 4J channel as well, um, which is fantastic reach. Um, I couldn't actually get my channel working up Alex Hills, but we will also show a whole bunch of snippets of this on, on my channel as well. So I'm joined tonight, uh, or tonight for New Zealand, by a, an assortment of wonderful supporters from all around the world. A lot of them um, have come to um, be known by me because of Candles for Assange, um, which I don't know many people know because it's so heavily based in Germany, thanks to Patrick Patash. Um, but um, it did originally start in New Zealand um, when we put some candles down for Julian's 47th birthday. Um, and so, Right now, um, I'm I'm pretty excited that we've got so many people um, getting on board here on New Zealand online protests. I've never done one before, so you're going to have to bear with me a little bit. Um, I will introduce some of the other people that are going to be joining with us, and I'm hoping to be reading out a statement from Nikki Hager, um, who I contacted earlier tonight. And he's not real keen on Zoom, but he is really keen to give us a statement. So hopefully that will pop up on my email um, while we're while we're doing this. Um, but without further ado, I really want to start with Commander X because um, he is actually the first Enon to get asylum um, and he's got the first the first person to get asylum at all, political asylum, and he's in Mexico right now. Um, and he's busy tweeting out to his many, many followers and hopefully we can get them on board and helping us with these virtual protests for the moment, but hopefully with a view to getting back on the street um, and also getting really vocal with our local MPs and our local media headquarters, NGOs, that sort of thing. Um, and so now, if I can, I'll hand it over to you, please, Commander X. Hand it over? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> No, no. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. I'm, I didn't get it out to my followers yet. What I need the social media people to do, either Unity for J or, or you guys uh, tweet it out with my Twitter handle, like say, hey, Commander X is on right now, and then I'll go retweet it. And we'll get like more, more peeps. But hi, everybody. Sort of a surprise drop-in visit to what is this anyway? Is this the Unity for J vigil? Like, is this what what eventually evolved into, or I'm confused what I'm even. Uh, so um, what you've got here is, um, so is Alex is from Candles for Assange, who, well, is part of Unity for J. Um, I'm one of the technical leads behind Unity for J. Um, and so I've enabled um, Alex to share out this New Zealand um, flavor of the march, the virtual march around the world. Um, so all of you find people are essentially virtually marching. Many of us are locked down through COVID-19 or other other um, means. Um, so we can't um, march the streets, but we're all here um, live in support of Julian Assange. And it's a year since he was um, ripped out of the um, embassy and um, stuck into where he is currently. So that's essentially the background to why we're here. <laughs> well, that makes good. sense. Anyway. Um, I'm glad to be here. I don't have any particular statement. My statement is always the same, free Julian Assange. So I think we need to do what we need to do to, to get that done. I, I think we're being a bit optimistic to start discussing things like street protests right now. That's my personal opinion. If anybody's asking it, I think, uh, I think you should stay at home for now. And, and, and that's just the way I think it's going to be for a minute. And, and we only got about a minute until Julian makes uh, uh, the real, you know, the real, the, real, the real meat of this trial is going to be in May, right? So we're, it's right around the corner. Literally, we're right around the corner. I remember the last time I came on this, this I think it's this particular show, I mentioned and, and it's really strange my advice was that online protest was more or less should wrap up and we should all hit the street and this was pre-corona uh, literally just pre-corona um when i appeared and 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 everybody was really gung ho to do that well we have a problem it's like you know sometimes there are things that are huger than even us and and this is this Thing that's happening in the world right now is one of those things. So 
my personal advice is to stay you know distant from people do your social distancing wear your mask and your gloves when you go out and just try not to go out really at all ever and for a while and it's going to be that way for a while i think therefore we need to do the exact opposite of what i advised the last time we need to immediately do a 180 and that's where a movement proves itself to be worthy because a movement needs to be flexible. And so we need to do a 180 and we need to pivot back onto cyber protest. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is something that anonymous, especially, which is if anybody knows where I'm coming from, that's where I'm coming. From. Okay. That's my perspective. You know, and there's all sorts of it doesn't have to be transgressive protests either you can do twitter storms you can do um legitimate email campaigns where you don't spam you just send a single well-written message to people in power all of these things take time to organize they take time to post on websites they take time to push them out and now you have all kinds of time because if you're doing what i believe personally is the right thing then you've got you're in your home and you've got all sorts of time right so i think that this we just have to accept this reality because i know for a fact that if we were to ask julian would he want a single person a single individual that can even contract this disease for the sake of, of, of protesting his liberty he would say no this is my personal experience with Julian, which he would say. I know that he wants to be safe, and I know that he wants all of us. So we have to pivot to cyber protest. And I think that that should be your topic um, on these sorts of live streams. You, you should focus on that heavy mm. and, and organize that and, and make that happen. We've got all sorts of time. And I think we have, too, a lot of an interesting opportunity if you will because we have a lot of new young people that have come into the idea of cyber activism in general sort of sideways they've come in through this free Julian movement and so now all of a sudden they find themselves in the world of the cyberpunk they find themselves in in um uh, 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 the world of information activism and so i think that there's a lot that you could stand to learn from times when cyber activism was you know also the only way to go or, or one of the major ways to go um you know it's pretty easy to gather in the streets from a tactical point of view it's a little bit more difficult it's much more powerful and much more effective i think you'll find cyber activism is. but it's also much more difficult I mean, it, there's a learning curve it requires that you actually do it um so it requires you put down the video game controller or the endless netflix uh, season after season of television that you are forging on and, and get online and actually roll up your sleeves and you'll you'll get a feel for what cyber activists like myself if you're wondering what it's like to be commander x well that's the shit that i do every day no matter what <laughs> that's my job that's my life is cyber activism right that's why i've become who i am so um if you're wondering what it's like to be an anon you're wondering what it's like to be a hacktivist well roll up your sleeves get up on twitter and find out because you know this is what it is you know? and how are you and finding how are you finding things like the algorithm bubble because what concerns me about you know you know having to be forced into this purely online which i fully agree with you right now we are definitely in a position where we have to make sure everyone is safe but um i feel like um, you know how do we get in a position where we're not so preaching to the converted because that's my experience of social media is just pure frustration because you're only really talking to a select group of people and even i will i i, I will answer your question but you may not like the answer and some of the people listening may not like it. the answer again um lies with a movement that is already readily available to everyone anyone literally can be anonymous you just simply self-identify that is and 
the ideas, those ideas have already been put forward. What it means is it means that you have to get a bit more transgressive. It's no different than protesting on the street. So, for instance, you described a bunch of really super legal, um, just now, uh, things and ways, right? Well, maybe you've got to stretch it. Mm -hmm. Who knows? You know, I think that you're going to see anonymous get quite active mm. in the freaking thing. Uh, they also have a lot of time on their hands. Yeah, so, to those of us uh, without tech uh, yeah. skills, we cannot even imagine getting to that level. And I guess there's always the concern right. that we need to keep the movement honest and, you know, not try to keep it as positive as possible. But, you know, well, it's getting I, the game that I they're mean, playing. What I, mean, what, I mean is, what I mean is, is that you've got to strike a balance. So, <clears throat> So, for instance, uh, you know, there are there are gray areas of cyber activism. One of the things about about storms and email campaigns, um, you know, we did a storm and an email campaign for my political asylum, and it actually ended up crashing the Mexican government email servers by accident. Um, it was it really wasn't meant to be. We wanted people to write individual messages to the president and foreign secretary and whatnot we didn't intend to crash the surface but it but it did i guess what i'm saying is you just need to get louder and you need to get more robust it's no different than if you were on the street and it wasn't working let's say you were marching around and you were having a movement well for instance we doing a science movement and we saw that we saw things ramping up we began to stop to see banner drops i got news for you a banner drop is 100 percent illegal you can go to jail and guess what it's no different than, than defacing the front page of a website. It's the exact same thing. Mm. Okay, it's that quickly fixed. It's that cheaply fixed. And both things are the same. They're an analogous, okay? And when you talk about having a sit-in, would you have a sit-in for Julian? Would you agree to a sit-in yeah. for Julian? Mm. Would you? Okay, you would. Mm. Oh, you I mean, would they've been doing okay, it in well, Brisbane. Okay, well, wait, 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 let me finish then. Please let me yeah. finish because I got political asylum for a sit-in. I got political asylum for a virtual city that we did for homeless people in Santa Cruz, California. That's my story. That's why I'm here. We did a virtual city. So before dissing or, or worrying about pushing the boundaries of transgressive cyber protests, understand that, first of all, some of this stuff really, the, you know, the Mexican government is saying, you know, that cyber protest, even transgressive protest, in my case, is a legitimate form of protest. What I'm saying is we just need to be open-minded and we need to get louder, we need to get older. Um, definitely, if you are in the camp, like, like of never ever doing anything that's illegal, fine. But guess what? Take a step back when you see the rest of us, like say, for instance, Anonymous stepping up and doing something else and 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 understand that like i remember keith mckendon from food nut bombs when we defended him when anonymous did cyber attacks in in orlando florida to defend him he's a friend of mine actually and he said food nut bombs neither condemns nor do they condone the attacks that anonymous has done on their behalf and that's a perfect way to stand when your allies decide that maybe we're going to take it order further. All I'm saying is, is if we're going to do cyber protests, we've got to be open-minded, we've got to think outside the box, and we've got to be really fucking loud. I mean, loud to the point where, yeah, you know, some, in some countries, some of the things are going to be illegal. Guess what? DDoS is not illegal in Mexico. You know what I mean? I just don't have anybody to defend Julian to attack here. So, you know, but, uh, you know, I'm definitely I mean, it, definitely not in disagreement with with that action going on. Just I guess I'm one of those people that would be clueless and also very public um, social media profile. I've saying, got no anon <laughs> stuff going on. <laughs> I'm just saying there's there's all sorts of ways to 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 help out. There's I think just the one thing is to pay attention, do it, put some hours in. Cyber activism, whether it's a pure white or pure black. But, but, but spend a lot of time on it, folks, because we've got a lot of time to spend. And that's all we've got left. So we've got to make it count. So form an army up. Yeah. And, 
Today, yeah, earlier yeah, yeah. at the Sydney, um, Ian Rose can also speak to this. We got uh, hacked, we got attacked, um, and uh, we had to shut it down. But um, one of the discussions that's that a good was thing. had... It just, means, it just means you're making waves. That's yeah. a good thing. You <laughs> know, a it just one. means you're making waves. Yeah. Another hacker will come along and help you secure that. Yeah. Another hacker will help you fix it. That's right, yeah. So um, one of the discussions we had actually was that um, seeing as we're having to ramp up talking to getting government on board was actually creating schedules potentially to, to, to make, you know, get people online resources to actually go and meet with their MPs in small groups or online at the moment, but, but actually doing it every hour in a day and having a focus in different um, constituencies, which I think is something that Truman has been doing in London as well. Um, and also there was talk of, you know, different ways to activate those kind of NGOs and media companies and, and the people that we can still contact and bombard with messages. But of course, those are all the sort of legal ways of going about things that we can really help um, give people resources for. But it doesn't in any way undermine um, what you're doing at all. And I appreciate well, all actions I of think, any I kind. <laughs> so. I'd like to give a shout out to Unity for J, yeah. first of all. Uh, and I'd like to point out that, um, not to brag, but I was there for the very first vigil. And, you know, we worry tonight about being online uh, really late. It's, uh, what, 2 a.m. here, 3 a.m. here, and we're talking about batteries running out and everything. Uh, I, I and Elizabeth Voss and Susie Dawson spent 36 hours straight broadcasting we never stopped right, yeah. and we had multiple live streams yeah. going out on, on a dozen different platforms yeah um and and that went on you know at least weekly and they were at least 24 hours long mm. and that is you know something that i will probably never forget i was really amazed that it went on as long as it did but i think that perhaps somebody needs to consider bringing something that strong back that was strong medicine back then well and action, it's long and it's really fucking hard to organize ac action for assange have been doing it um ever since unity 4j stopped doing the live vigil so actually have you ever yeah, come that's action fantastic. for assange i think i think that we need to go along with these and, and 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 just keep rotating keep the guests you know i'm willing to pitch in you know i, right. I can can I just so, can I just break because I think Paddock uh, is just going live at the moment. How uh, good evening. This is Paddock Radio. My name is Josh Johnson. We're live to air from Waiheke Island in New Zealand. We're actually on a Zoom call right now, uh, a Zoom webinar chat with the Candles for Assange team, and we've been talking um, with uh, teams from around the world. We just heard from Commander X, who is actually we're going out live on our channels right now. Now, unfortunately, I'm not able to use any headphones, so I can't take any questions right now, but I'll just tell you what we're doing from our end. Every single time we go live to air, we are talking about Assange. We, are, we fully support uh, free and independent media. Now, what this means is that we want to make sure that people are able to get their messages out no matter where they are. If you've never heard of Paddock Radio before, basically what we do is I am a 100% uh, solar powered radio station that channel travels all the way up and down New Zealand from festival gigs and uh, outdoor gigs. Give me a thumbs up if my audio is coming through all right. Is, are you guys picking it up? Yeah, nice. Thank you very much. Okay, so basically, um, I heard Commander Rex talking about hacktivism, and I am very, very into this because one of our main problems is getting audio and video feeds out to the internet. Now, at the moment, we're streaming to we're using a Restream service, Restream.io. We stream out to our YouTube channel, our Facebook page. We're streaming to our Twitter account, which is Periscope. And we're also streaming on our, our very own website, paddockradio.net. Um, and we do, we're trying to do uh, uh, reports every week about what's actually going on with lockdown and especially with uh, the Zooms that have been coming up uh, around the country lately. Trying to touch base on things that people necessarily feel about the openness of the internet and the way that it's changed so far and uh, the way that we can support people for getting more online and getting more of their, their opinions out there without having it squashed by large media. And what I'm really finding is that there's a lot of uh, uh, ways that you can do this that are fully um, uh, open source as well. I've seen Jitsi Meet 
has been uh, bandied around a couple of times. I know Zoom's working quite well. Uh, we have got a connection at the moment with all of the, the candles for Assange crew online. And um, personally, I really heavily support this because I believe that uh, journalism is something that it's not just... It's not just something that big news channels do, okay? And it's not something that if you've if you've been to university for three years and you know you you've got a job and a hat and a camera and, and you know you're getting paid X amount to do something, I believe that information exchange is one of the most uh, important catalysts for the way that human society has moved as a whole uh, in recent memory and certainly since you know ever since the the Library of Alexandria burned down. You know, we haven't had such a huge um, free exchange of information that has gone absolutely worldwide. And I think it's such a massive catalyst for social change and a massive catalyst for uh, how we act as a species. And we've seen it go from both good and bad. We've also seen how people have been using social medias as an emotional contagion um, a, a paper just came out by Princeton University that's on our website at the moment uh, talking about how people see X amount of negative words in their uh, social feeds or media feeds that can go into paper, newspaper headlines and Twitter feeds, Reddit feeds, all of those sorts of things count as something like this. So one of the main ways that you can combat that is by making sure that you uh, positive flooding, we call it, so here at the station, we try and pack a whole bunch of things into a couple of days and try and flood news feeds as much as we can with uh, not just one message, but overwhelming um, changes in it. To Number one, it, it'll change a, a little bit of the way the Facebook al algorithm filters things. But number two, uh, we call it, the, it's almost like the shotgun approach. You, you would get this in media and marketing where... If you throw 20 balls at somebody, they're probably likely to catch one. But if you throw them one at a time, then they're, they're more likely to catch a larger amount of these. And that's one of the um, one of the strategies that we're trying to adopt here at Paddock Radio is where if we are going to be talking about issues and trying to improve digital lives and digital communication lives of people, not just our followers, but you know, um, maybe you can go out and tell other people, hey, this is what we learned. Um, this is how I figured out, you know, it's, if you're, you're feeling really horrible, maybe stop watching so much horrible television or <laughs> reading so many horrible articles about things. And, um, and the main way that you can get that is by having an independent media or having uh, an option for an independent media which uh, is, is growing less and less uh, as, as we've been watching, you know, since the 1950s. Um, it's, now, I'm not sure how we would change this, but I, I'm, I'm really interested in, in the discussion about it. Uh, I think currently what we've just been doing has been trying to flood as many uh, online channels with um, positive and original content as well. So we, we try and talk to people that are, not necessarily on every cover or not every magazine, but get an original report from somewhere on the ground from people like you guys who are sitting at home with your cameras on and talking about what our experiences are. I find this really, really important part of the discussion. And um, I'd like to thank you very much for being a part of it. And uh, oh, thanks thank for you. letting me on the Zoom table as well. I'm going to shut my uh, audio down so I could take some questions possibly. Uh, See if it works. It might just make a big squeaky noise. Okay. Okay. Does anyone want to ask any questions? And is anyone really eager to be next because they have to go or anything like that? I'll um, I have a look through the people that are actually on my um, screen here right now and see if anyone. What about you, Nat? Are you keen to have a chat? Are you keen to chat now? Would you like to talk to Paddock or ask any questions of Paddock or anyone else? No. No? Just... I want to say hello to Commander. How are you? Um, I think it's Commander <laughs> muted, unmute. Nice. Okay. Hi, Nat. How are you? Hi. How are you? <laughs> Thank you for setting mute. this up, Nat. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Pleasure. Well, you sent the right person. I'll do anything for Nat. So. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'd oh. like to say a, a big shout out to Commander X as well. Thanks uh, for your support, and I really support everything you're doing as well. Yeah, totally, totally. Well, I, I like everything he had to say. I mean, I don't know if he can hear me. It's a, it's a shame. I'm he not sure, but if he can, if he can hear me, then what I would say to him is, um, I think you're, I think you're absolutely on the right track. And here's what I have to say about independent media. I, I got involved in independent media a long time ago. Um, right around 2000. Uh, I, should, actually, I should tell you you're actually on air at the moment. Okay, well, thank you. I'll make sure not to use any curse words. Um, <laughs> you can uh, say whatever you want. Right. I, will try, I will try not to drop any F-bombs, but I'd like to say that I worked closely with Amy Goodman um, back in the early 2000s. Uh, she's a real pioneer, I think, uh, more than any of us in the independent media movement. And I'd like to say that what I believe is that people who dig media, people like yourself who dig doing it and dig producing i i do I, I produced a little bit of video and radio myself i I've, I've even done some gaming uh, streaming so i can tell you that you know streaming is quite popular in, in all sorts of areas you wouldn't even imagine it's a very good way to get people to pay attention to things and to get connected and i would like to encourage people to not have this dichotomy in your mind of mainstream media versus you you don't have to necessarily be all campy. Um, you can download OBS Studio and, 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 and produce a very professional, very nice, very, even, even commercially viable stream and collect shit tons of donations, which you absolutely deserve because then you can get better cameras and better microphones and, and just take off with it. Don't be afraid to be pro. Mm. I guess is what I'm saying. Don't be afraid to believe that you can be pro. Well, can I? You can put out a nice product that is just, don't think of, I guess, just don't think of it like, oh my God, you know, mainstream media, how do I ever be a TV show or a radio thing that could ever compare to that? Don't fuck that. You, mm. You're your own media now, and they have so much technology totally. that at um, the point and click of a button, you can. Do a TV station on your lap. That so, is stupid. Commander X, can I can I put someone else on and just um, because Patrick um, is someone who has really really run with this movement and also really really um, from from I, I've seen posts from him on Facebook from 2010. He really has been on Chelsea Manning and Julian Assange from the very beginning. And I was kind of bewildered when my little birthday um, celebration um, that I was then trying to push further afterwards became um, basically candles for Assange with the regular protests. So if I can, and I'm very, very happy to come back to people who want to talk more, but I really, really want to hear um, from Patrick Bratash. Can I um, unmute you now, Patrick, and bring you into the conversation? Um, thank you for all you've done in Germany. It's just incredible. Thank you for having me. So, what do you want to know? Oh, talk to us. Tell us uh, your thoughts. You what we started, I guess, and also what you see as the way forward. I mean, you can talk about the solo vigils that you've been doing, which is sort of like a "We Are Millions" <laughs> candles for Assange style. I, uh, well, and anything to say? Don't yes, forget anything. Yes, anything to say. Yeah. I was I was just uh, thinking. Um, about where I can, can you hear me? Is this yep. quality is good? Yeah. Okay. I was uh, thinking about where I've been last year at this time, and I can uh, can can really uh, have a good. I can really good remember what was going on one year ago, because I was I was checking out uh, the Rapley stream in front of the embassy because if you remember some days before. It was not clear when, he, if he was, uh, uh, um, if somebody wants to get him out of the embassy or not. So, I was really spending hours in front of, in front of uh, my screen and just just watching this roughly RT live stream in front of the embassy without any words for hours. And uh, um, I think it was a, it was a. It was a Wednesday, 11th of April last year, 
And um, I was not paying attention at this time when they got him out. So somebody called me and said, no, they got him. And I turn on my computer and YouTube and watch this video and I can't found the actual uh, footage where he was dragged out of the embassy. But my girlfriend at this time found it and she was saying, don't do it, don't do it, don't watch it, it don't do it. And I found it then and I was looking at these terrible 30 seconds when they drag him out. And um, yeah, I this this was a such a impressive and heavy experience for me to see him coming out of uh, the embassy looking like this and I, I need really some some days to realize what's what's really going on so these are my thoughts today because uh, this activates so many people all over the world i think because i'm doing this since 2010 i think uh, fighting for uh, justice for mr Assange and chelsea manning and um, there are not so many people join me but the last year so many people came and start fighting for mr assange got known of what's going on and um yeah these are my thoughts today um uh something that came up in today's uh action was the idea the idea of um, how we spread uh, things further and so on, which I'm picking up from what Commander X was talking about earlier, how do we do that and so on. I think one of the things to do is to actually um, connect the Assange issue with whatever other issue it is you might be talking about on a Facebook page, like say it's something to do with, or media is an easy one, but climate's another one because it's the same climate denialists. They're the same vulture capitalists that are keeping us from hearing things like Julian Assange and so on. So that might mean for us to have to join some right-wing crazy pages as well as just regular climate action pages and so on, but tie the story in, perhaps if we try and tie the story in, because I know I know one thing that we do at uh, Stork, Support Assange and Wikileaks Coalition Sydney. Now we've been going only since uh, 2011, not quite as, since 2010, as many of you others have. But um, we have two things. We've got a public uh, Facebook page and a private discussion Facebook page. And on that private one, we have a system where you've got to be on topic or you're taken off. And a lot more pages are doing that sort of thing now. So I think if we are going on to a climate action page, for example, we have to be on topic. We draw it in so we're posting up an assange article but we're talking about why this is relevant to the greater movement so i just wanted to put that out there to you all and uh all the best um is there anyone else who would like to um have a chat about um well their experiences um and supporting julian assange and um what it means to be unable to protest uh, many others after this, uh, we thought I was not really finished. We, we, uh, I saw uh, Alex uh, Ritchell every year and uh, bring in uh, at, the, at his birthday. And from this time on, I start his uh, weekly rituals. And I was really alone at the first day, but I doubled up every week. So the second day, we were uh, two or four, and then we become very quickly in time uh, more than 30 people until until now and when we were able to go outside we continue these rituals of course um i would like to ask the question isn't it more effective to come together all the different countries cities and make the Actions parallel, so we can all be more. Uh, yes, uh, this is more effective, I think. You know, 
they were visualed in uh, Australia and Germany, all these different places. But it's not the same time. It's not in it's the same name. It's not the same direction. I think we can be more effective if we bundle up and make the same at the same time and act like one. Definitely, that was one of the, the ideas behind the Unity for J movement. There were so many um, sort of little pockets of, of people who were doing their own little bit, and the idea that we could all come together as one and we could, you know, we could unite. Um, and the internet um, brings, brings it to the fore, and, and certainly from my perspective as the um, technical director of the Internet Party in New Zealand, um, the reason why we, we came together for that very first um, hashtag Reconnect Julian um, vigil was that we saw that communication between people and, and between people who had um, a really or a great idea of what was going on. I mean, Julian Assange and his um, his take on geopolitics and his vision and his light, you know, what he could tell was something that the world missed as soon as he was disconnected. So our first vigil was about reconnecting Julian. And that we soon found that there was so many people around the world that needed that voice that, um, that needed to be able to be put out um, to the world that, that, you know, we continued and it did turn into a weekly thing and it did continue on for quite some time. Um, certainly once, um, and sort of Susie Dawson and Elizabeth, um, they've all, all um, continued on with various streams of this and, and certainly supporting it. And, and Alex um, came in as, as part of that. Um, myself, you know, I've, I've continued helping out with um, a lot of things. So I've, <laughs> I still uh, look back to the days when we started this uh, Unity for J um, Discord server, and overnight there was hundreds and hundreds of people that just jumped in to say um, hello, um, and um, and you know they wanted to help, they wanted to do something. So I totally agree with you, Patrick. The internet is a great enabler of people to collaborate and communicate, and I think you know well this is. This is evidence of it. Um, there's people from all around the um, all around the world um, gathered um, to support Assange, um, and in this time, um, it's it's incredible. Great, thanks, Joe, for taking that for a little while. And I think I've sorted out the screen now, so it looks a little bit more um, beautifully laid out. Um, so we have a whole bunch of other people in the stream here and I'm looking up on my screen. Um, I'm just wondering who else would like to have a little chat at this point. We've got Sally. Have we got Sally there? Yeah, Sally's there. Can I unmute you, miss? Um, please talk away, Sally. Are you going to do anything for us? I can't hear anything from you. You're going to have to talk. No. No unmuting from them. <laughs> we just get a screen. So I don't know if they need to share sound or something. Um, but what about you, Fiona? Would you like to have a little chat? I'll unmute you. I noticed Alison put her hand up earlier as oh, well. Oh, Alison, sorry. I wasn't looking at the right screen at that point. So let me go back and have a look. That's good because other people are seeing all the screens. I can't even find Alison anymore. She's still there. There you are. Okay, and you're muted. I'll unmute you. And so Alison um, is is running really well, was running really regular events in, in London. And I guess we're just going to get an update now on what's been happening in London and whether you've attended any of the other events that other people are running there and whatever you would like to share, really. Okay. Hi, everyone. Yeah, it's all happening here in London. Not. <laughs> um, we were doing a lot of stuff. We were doing candles in Trafalgar Square. We were doing um, regular actions, the court actions, um, Belmarsh vigils, um, yeah, heaps of stuff. And we did, um, we took it to Mike Pompeo, which was the best, my most fun moment was the day we took it to Mike Pompeo when uh, <laughs> he came to town to talk policy um, with the um, British people, I know, probably back dealing with them, um, and we got wind of where he was. So we all went down with a, a protest, which was five of us, because it was like late, short notice and everything. But we just had the best time yelling out, war criminal, you will rot in hell. 
war criminal, war criminal. We had so much fun. It was, you know, the adrenaline was pumping that day. But, uh, yeah, or as we are under lockdown here with a ter terrible coronavirus bill, which does, you know, take away every single liberty, basically, including um, the freedoms of uh, the rights of disabled and the elderly. So it super looks like they're trying to kill people off. Um, we are doing a little vigil today with banners outside the jail with masks and gloves and we're just going to put the banners in situ on the one year anniversary and take some photos for social media but we'll all be two meters apart from one another and it's right out in the open there'll be no one there don't worry about us um i agree with what's been said so far especially with coming together and combining and i put the address of a wiki page um challengepower.info on the message there that people can add their vigils what's going on in their neck of the woods so that we can all be aware of you know what's going on with it you know if you're not on twitter you can just go to that wiki page as well um i agree with i wanted to make a point about the um internet power and I agree with Alex, like some of us aren't really that skilled at, I, I don't really know how to just, you know, I know how to do a Twitter storm and tweet and all that. But, you know, the big Twitter storm we had um, on the on last, on the anniversary of collateral murder release didn't really seem to trend, did it? Um, uh, so, I'm not sure. We've had a few problems with things like that, haven't we? The, um, yeah. We've, so we've had we amazing successes that? as well because there was that time where we did the World Press Freedom one and Unity 4J actually got temporarily suspended and that was because they were pushing some buttons then. And I think probably that the key is actually jumping on on other people's threads, not, not your sort of average activist friends but pushing out there to yeah. you know get on those establishment lines i know they've got ways of hiding replies as well so this is why i'm feeling increasingly like it's futile and we're just preaching to the converted yeah i totally agree with the preaching to converted thing because you know i know all of my followers are going to like and will retweet my tweets um you know not necessarily read them through um I think to a certain degree with the, the writing to MPs campaign, which Truman's been leading here, and um, we've done a lot of, hell of a lot of, you can only write to your MP and get an, you only get a response if you're in their electorate in the UK. Um, um, but I have written to Maurice Payne in Australia. Um, she's not in my electorate, she's Senator, so that's okay. <laughs> she's, you know, Department of Foreign Affairs Minister. Um and I have not even got a reply from her. So I think um, targeting um, in, a, in the same way that we might do a Twitter storm, targeting an MP in that sort of fashion, quietly, as Mrs C would say. But, um, you know, might have some value. I have had some experience with my local MP here whose name's um, Sir Robert Neal, N-E-I-L-L. -L. Now, he is the, um, he's on the Parliamentary Committee for um, Justice, so he made a statement about um, the release of uh, prisoners um, in the coronavirus period. And so that, that is exactly what page. Get that story that he wrote. I put it on my Twitter feed. But look at all of the um, heads of government in their portfolios. Find someone who's relevant to the issue and find something they've written about it and then attack, get in there that way with this, with our story and uh, and the relevance to it. And that's what I was trying to do with uh, Robert O'Neill. And um, Am I right in thinking that Truman has been doing a schedule? Is that what I saw him kind of trying to encourage was that to he had, today yeah. we are doing this MP? And, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, he did an A to, a to Z, Z list um, and um, chose one for each day. Um, and it's, that's to sort of um, to flood them. I don't know how many people we, you know, there's no way of really knowing how many people wrote to each one. Mm. I think it targeted, um, he's, it's great that he, what he did, but I targeted one, Robert Buckland, who's a Lord Chancellor and the Secretary of State for Justice. He has, um, with this other guy called Lord Mark, Lord Burnett of Malden. <laughs> Lord Mark, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two, two guys have the power to, uh, suspend this whole shoe bag wow. right wow. debacle 
they can say that the magistrate has been acting with um, bias or not bias, actually, it's not, to, yeah, with bias or her actions weren't fair. So that would be the ones when um, that might get it to judicial review. So, um, and Robert Buckland has an electorate which is near Swindon, um, but he's also the Lord Chancellor and Secretary of State for Justice. And uh, that, I think it's worthwhile really targeting the people who have and what you said before, meeting, um, trying to organise a delegation to meet with these people because they can flick you back an email and say, yeah, 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 we don't care or, you know, oh, we listen to your concerns but this is our policy. Um, but we are people, we are good people, we can have our own committee groups that can go and meet them like the lobbyists that by the government do. Mm -hmm. I think we should act in that way as well. Yeah, yeah and, and if we can't do it, if we can't do it in person, because I can understand that people will be discouraging groups of people going to the... It's the perfect time to do it. It's, it's actually a great time to connect with your own That's people right. in your own neighbourhood and try and find a bunch of people that can go to your local MP as well. But then, yeah. you know, that will that will connect you with a group of local people to do your local actions, which I think is really important as well. Um, um, I mean, this is, sounds farcical. You'll think I'm an idiot for saying this, but, okay, we can't actually go out in the street at the moment, but the, the MPs of... Britain have been given £10,000 to buy their own laptops so they can do all their work from home. And you know the Australian Parliament shut down for five months, so they're doing all their work from home as well. So if they can have a little virtual parliament, we can have a little virtual meeting with them. So instead of actually having a delegation, we could do something like this mm. with them, yeah, mm. and we should lobby for that. But so with for that, we do need sort of like a loose, you know, like a leader committee kind of, mm. you know, arrangement so that it look, all looks like, you know, what they want. The I think type the, of people they want the other thing we could do is rather than sending out, you know, the Australian uh, Sanj campaign, um, I, I probably got it around the wrong way, but they had the auto emails that were fantastic because it meant it kind of indicated yeah. to you who the people were in your life that you should be focusing on because of where you are. Yeah. And I've done it for being British. I've done it for being Australian because I grew up in Australia <laughs> and I've done it for being a New Zealander as well. So what I noticed was that um, the NHS ones, for instance, they just said we're not dealing with any complaints at the moment when the whole system is just shut down so you're not going to get anywhere and if you send us form letters we disregard them we just take the first one or we take every 10 or something you know we totally disregard them we don't answer back and so what I thought was a toolkit that where you could have cut and paste this cut and paste that cut and paste this easy peasy here you go you formed your letter of what you wanted to say and just give people a toolkit that keeps mixing it up in a random way that makes every email different yeah something like that that maybe. would be that would be ideal to put on challengepower.info, mm. the wiki page that we have, you know, yeah. um, a tool to put on there. And if people could promote that and, and, and ask people to use that resource and, and add to it, mm. um, it's easy to just go on there and, you know, jump in because it's a wiki page. Yeah. Um, the targeted, the volume of, I think volume is a good thing with MPs. Because you know, it's like, oh, another one, another one, another one. So they've, they've got some random idea. You know, they're not going to reply to them, but they've they've been volumized. Mm. Um, so that's a good thing. But also the targeting to the um, key people who have the power to influence this. And I really think a delegation, a virtual delegation, would be a good idea if we can um, try and organize one of those. Mm. Um, because there is so much evidence about COVID around, and the words of Sir Bob O'Neill. Who is the state parliament? Who on the parliamentary um, uh, committee for um, justice? He was the one that put out the um, email about prisoners being uh, the press release about prisoners being released, and he had said he had a duty of care and a responsibility to prisoners. So we take that point. We say yes, we do. So we want to talk to you about it, and we want to meet you with you in a virtual meeting, and then he can go and take it to his next parliamentary meeting of that uh, that group that he is the head of the parliament in the uk and yeah like you said i did i did that in australia as well with my australian dresses in here and i think the ian's point about the environmental groups the other groups that we can lock in you know sort of leak into with our message are great because you know i came from this uh, which says stop a dining and i don't know if anyone knows stop a dining I, I i thought it was like everyone knows stop a dining that not many people do over here. Nobody actually, no one I met did, I don't think, except a few Australians. 
but you know it's that's Julian's message you know like if if uh, if you're an environmental group if you're in a animal rights welfare you know uh, humanitarian group then this is the fight you should be in because it's the you know he didn't say it's the apex but I always say it's the apex issue all of the freedoms all of the rights all of everything of the whole world this is the apex issue you know <laughs> Yeah, I can I see that's... Ian Rose nodding profusely. Would you like to say something to that, Ian? <laughs> I'll unmute you. Uh... Thanks. Uh, yeah, no, you, you're absolutely right. It is the apex issue. I love that terminology. I haven't really thought of it myself like that. Um, and, and, and something that did occur to me earlier was when we took over the hashtag press freedom, remember the English had that thing? Uh, the hashtag was media freedom, and they changed it to press freedom because we'd flooded it so hard. Yeah. Um, I think they're the kinds of things we want to look out for again because that that was a really brilliant movement. Um, yeah, the, that really uh, got onto some establishment threads, and that's why Unity 4J got the instant ban and they were off for the whole week. So they managed a couple of days of it, but we all took it on board and carried it anyway. So Unity 4J yeah, really I, got that Yeah, I was going. the one that set that up. Yeah, remember? brilliant. Um, and um, uh, got that got that going, and I actually mm. got you to email everybody for me, yeah, uh, which was great because yeah. that's what that's what made that happen. That's why we got that reach yeah. because of your, your e list. Oh, well, it was um, just the candles groups were all live and had just done their July, so it was an ideal time to ask me to do to to to, to ask them as well. But um, yeah, it was brilliant. And but it's, really surprising how it worked as well and also i had been talking on the discord server and getting uh, suggesting that people do the rogue speeches and then i ended up going and doing that one at new zealand parliament as a result of really all that inspiration that you set off <laughs> really oh nice um, oh nice yeah so i think that's the sort of thing we might want to be looking out for again um i i, I think covid19 for example is probably too muddy for us to make a noise in but there, there, there's got to be some, we've got to really keep our eyes open on that. Um, and um, uh, I've really got nothing else to say. I suppose I, I could have given you a bit of background on, on, on the movement that I've been part of. I'm based in Sydney in the city here. Um, and our, our community group, Support Assange and WikiLeaks Coalition, has been going since 2011. Um, and we've been on quite a wave of different uh, campaigns through that time. I was reminded of the uh, ban the blockade. Well, I think actually it was from 2013 when PayPal and MasterCard and all those people uh, blocked uh, block donations to WikiLeaks, and that was that was quite a quite a um, arduous time. But we've really gone through a lot of phases here in Australia as to interest in Assange and um, how it's sort of gone up and down and up and down. And for example, when he was first um, first arrested last year, we had a snap action down at the UK embassy and um, we got a whole new bunch of people on board with that. And we marched in the streets without our schedule one approval and we had a really good stringer from RT for that. And he actually videoed what a small bunch of people were doing to make it look like a really large bunch of people doing something, which was good. But it is our behind the scenes work that's gonna matter. And, and, and for all of this time, it has been very much our behind the scenes work that has made those differences. And uh, I think the idea of us writing unique emails to all of those key MPs and I would like to be in touch with you, Alison, if that's possible, to get some of those names of those people in the UK you were talking about. I'll write to Alex and Alex can put us in touch if that's okay. Yeah, actually, um, any any um, links and things that are going on in the chat, I have I can't really access chat without showing it to everyone, which is a bit dangerous given what was going on before. <laughs> so um, I, I can't really respond to chat. But Joe, if you could um, make sure that sort of the details that people wanted to share with this um, live on stream could be posted out somewhere and then I can retweet it when we stop this or later. When other people hey, totally. Yeah, I've been um, I've been collecting up links and uh, using my powers as um, restream um, magic to uh, share them out. So all the YouTubers and the Facebookers and the Periscopers and the, what else? D livers and uh, all the all the other people um, yeah. here are getting the links to wikis and bits and pieces. So do post them in the uh, in the chat, and I'll 
I'd like to say something real quick. Uh, Please. Before you do, I'd just like to make my apologies for having to go early. Um, I'm in a very freezing environment here and I have to go and get warm and eat and all that sort of thing. So I'm really sorry to leave early, but thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you. Lovely to meet you all. Thank you so much for coming and and joining us. It's great to have you. You've got so much experience, way more than um, certainly the New Zealand crew. (laughs) Oh, no. Don't say that. (laughs) <laughs> all the best thank you Ian bye bye so bye Alison bye. I really want to thank you for all the amazing um, you know the, the, the work that you've been doing um, whether it was on the behalf of Candles for Assange or not it just it's been great to see um, all the action going on um, what I was going to ask you as well one of my burning questions was uh, is Truman still planning the car thing on the 2nd of May was was that still going to go ahead do you know yes um as as of today, yeah, I, that's a, as far as I know, um, right. it'll depend on what, what you can do because you know they do you you can't you're not supposed to drive either, no. you know if it's not an essential <laughs> thing. So you know, it's we might change uh, tomorrow. Uh, mon- what's today? It's Saturday. Saturday. Um, tomorrow Monday is the day that there was the proviso. You know, maybe we'd get out of lockdown, but the m- um, motions they've been making. Um, you know, they have been making is that, no, you'll have to stay in for a little while longer. So, mm. you know, as everyone says, you know, this this whole trial um, should have been aborted mm. um, at that prelim hearing last week, but they're still, you know, pretending that, you know, oh, everything might be right by May 18. I, I um, hear so that they were taking like... it to appeal and it's actually going to go to a different judge. Am I right in that? Does anyone know any facts about that? Um, but also, I want to also jump back to Commander X, but after saying thank you so much, Alison, and I'm going to stay okay. on the stream because I'm sure we're going to still have a discussion, but I want to jump I'm, back I'm to Commander X again. <laughs> I'm listening. Okay, sorry, Commander X, you carry on. I do, I do hope Alison stays listening. It really broke my heart to hear her voice. And I, I really, one of the things I picked up immediately is a, a sense of resigned despondency. And I really want to address that. Um, I know, Allison, I want to reach out to you personally and tell you, you don't maybe even know much about me, but I encourage you <laughs> to find out something about me. And, and in doing so, you'll find out some really crazy crap. <laughs> No doubt about it. But then also what I would like to give you is a sense of hope. People, please understand. You don't understand the power that you have and and and, and how fate has actually bestowed upon so many of you the actual time now to go out and and people say, Oh, I'm I'm not I hear so much. I'm not technical. I'm not you know what? You know how to tweet, so don't. Don't cry to me. You know how to turn your computer on and you know how to send out a tweet. And and the rest, we all learned. We all learned it, man. Do you think that I started in 2010 this all-knowing a non-hacktivist who like like could reach out and just touch dictators and they fall like like candles, you know? No. You know, we we spent you know, decades really, but yes, yeah, cyberpunks, but then years really learning how to, to, to do this. But the power that you have with the internet, it was Twitter that ran dictators out of office in the Arab Spring. Twitter, man. And these politicians, they are so vain now. They are so sent. Trump, Trump has politicized and weaponized Twitter to the point where now Every politician in the world has to do the same. They are so sensitive. You can reach out and and really, totally, with just 100 people, you can touch these people through Twitter, through Facebook, through social media, through all of it. And so I guess what I want to leave you with is a sense of hope that, that yes, you've got to pivot. You just got to, you got to, you got to do it. We all got to do it so we can live, but we can we can really be effective. We can be so effective. We can be we can be effective in a way that might actually be a, a realization to you 
you, you'll be like, holy crap, man, look at the power I have. Because that's the story of Anonymous. If you, if you go watch We Are Legion, the, the incredible famous documentary that they did about us and what we did, all of it is the idea of hope, the idea that, that you are empowered by this little device in front of you, this computer and an internet connection is all you need to change the world. It's all you need. You can, you can change the course of human history with your laptop. And so just believe, just believe and, 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 totally. and know that even though you've been left with this as a last resort, you can left with what I personally have spent my whole career telling people is the most powerful weapon. In, in, in Dark Ops, my, my second book, I make the point of saying that we stopped an army. And now that's a whole other story and I won't bother to tell the story, but we used information activism to stop an army from attacking people. We trump kinetic force for the first time in human history. Anonymous did that. And we did it through just the same tools you better be able to use right now. Twitter, email, the internet, that's it, that's all. And you, and you so, don't think that the algorithm has crippled that to some extent because it's just getting so toxic? I mean, no, really because I, 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 see my, if I see my bros. If you go to my Twitter account and look at some of the activists that I follow, you'll and follow them, you'll find that most of us spend our whole life figuring out how to undo those friggin' algorithms. So we're still effective. Mm. An Anonymous is still out there doing its thing. You go follow a bunch of anon accounts and you'll see them advocating and using these techniques to mm. good effect on a half a dozen different causes on any on any given day mm. and and apply not necessarily the techniques and the strategies but the hope just to understand people that you have such a power mm. so don't be despondent be productive <laughs> you know what I mean? make every moment online count get online get into irc channels get into um and the other thing I think that I'll just leave you with is I'm probably going to lose battery. I notice every time that I come on, especially lately, um, at the beginning, uh, back uh, when he, what Ian was describing, those first vigils that we did for, for Julian's connectivity, um, we were all a little closer maybe, and there wasn't, but I noticed, I noticed the difference when I come on live. I'm a hacker. I get it. Okay, I'm the big scary black hat hat. Okay, but just the little guys, just be open to everything because it's the black hat hacktivists who have mastered also the other stuff, like the social media. You talk about how to beat the algorithms, it's the black hat hacktivists that are out there that can also help you with that stuff. Yeah, well, we will so, definitely be coming to you um, all for all help. Like, <laughs> what's, 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 Let's all not worry so much about what color hat we wear or, or what we're all doing, because trust me, the cyberpunks are on the front line of this. The hackers are on the front line of this. Mm. Because whether you all like it or not, Julian's one of ours. That's a fact. Mm. Julian's one of ours. Man. Okay, so we're bringing it home one way or another. But... So don't don't worry so much about about being so scared of hackers anymore because the ones that are on your side are really useful. I don't think and, anyone's scared of hackers at all. I think we're just scared of being the people to you know like we we love it when they <laughs> come and do their stuff. We love it, <laughs> but you know don't get me wrong. I mean I guess the, one of the things Unity for Jay taught me was being careful on the it. funding just and careful on hate. what you promote. You know no matter how no, happy but, you are about and it. And, and that's all we ask just don't hate us for it don't no. us for it and also you know uh, retweeting something doesn't break any laws so yeah. just be prepared for all of that because anonymous is going to do what it feels it has to do it, like i said it's kept its peace until now we're going to see how this plays out if you want to know and i'll leave you with this folks uh i, I like to stay positive so two things one just to re rehash again to allison to all of you um understand the power you have and, and it is it is in fucking incredible. A keyboard multi it multiplies an activist by a thousand. It turns you into a thousand compared to fifteen or twenty years ago. So you have incredible power. And second of all, I would like to leave you on an upbeat note as far as my legal prognosis. I still 
feel, and I don't feel this means we should let up. And it's tough to give these prognoses because either way I say it, if I say he's doomed and I make everybody panic, I really think that we're going to win. And I think we can, we can all come together right now and be a part of history. I think that's why more than any reason we should do this because when our children and our grandchildren ask us, you know, where were you? You know what Absolutely. I mean? They, they ask me now, my, my little nephews, where and nieces, where were you when Mandela was in prison? I was in the fucking street fighting apartheid and getting arrested by the FBI <laughs> at the age of 18. So, you know, um, so you, you want it, this is the moment that you put your name in, in the history of WikiLeaks and, and, and in the history of this, this, this resistance. So, um, you know, I just keep hope. I think we're going to do this. I think we're going to beat it, but I think that uh, we need to pivot mm. and we need to accept that and we need to embrace the power. Well, if we can, because if we can help you well, in any no, way, no, like no, if no, we no. can help it in any way. Well, no majestic way to win, guys. Okay, listen. What more majestic way to win? Think about this. This is glorious, okay, guys? Because when we win this, having had to pivot from the street to a completely online campaign, I mean, isn't that what this is all about? Isn't Julian and WikiLeaks a creature of this incredible new virtual existence called the internet, this world that we live in, right? Uh, it's pure information. I mean, I think in a way, it's sort of beautiful. What a beautiful way for us to beat this, that we had to turn to the power of the very thing that we're defending, um, you know, to, in order to, you know, to actually have to pick up a virtual sword in order to defend Julian and Wicked. So I think it's a great thing. I'm will, willing to come back, share more of my expertise Thank anytime. You. Stay yeah. You all know how to reach me. Yeah, well, and like I said, if there's anything we can do to help share stuff that you're doing, please just let us know. And if there's any kind of campaigns that we can come on board, I don't know how we help and on, but we would definitely, I mean, what, 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 you, how does you, someone you, come you and really help? You really don't. You, well, you really don't. I mean, for those, you remember that you've got a lot of listeners who aren't you. So, but if you are out there and you're interested, you, you can, you, you, you just become anonymous. There's no club, there's no ID card. Mm. And then start reaching out on Twitter to, various accounts, you'll find your way. Okay. There's nobody that indoctrinates somebody into anonymous. Mm. Um, activism is not for everybody. It's an acquired taste. I'm not here to try to recruit. Um, but what I am here to, to do is to lessen friction between all factions, and including conservatives, libertarians, liberals, um, white hats, black hats. I think that everybody's going to come together in their own way with this. Let's not worry about um, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a street anarchist. A lot of my code comes from the street. I don't worry about what my brother's doing as long as my brother's standing in line. Mm. You know, that's, that's it. And, 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 uh, I've got a burning question for you. This. You mentioned before oh God. Uh, Amy Goodman. Um, you mentioned yes. before Democracy You're Now. Now, Amy Goodman is someone I immensely respect, particularly when we're talking about Iraq war and combating, you know, disinformation in the mainstream media. But um, I, I've looked with interest in how she has pushed Russiagate and some of the worst lies that I've seen, and it's come from Democracy Now! And I just wonder, what, how do you feel about something like that? Well, people are wrong sometimes. You know, we're all fucking human. And if you look at my career, which is extensive and, and, and very public as well, there's, you know, dozens of times that I was just flat out fucking wrong. Okay? Right. And that that, that happened. Um, I think that what we see and what me and Susie and, and Elizabeth especially, I think, clicked on right away and saw in this is this is one of those unique causes where that shit just doesn't matter. It just doesn't anymore. Um, I, I think that those differences all sort of melt away when we face such an existential threat to the freedom of information that we face with Julian's case. Um, and in that sense, Julian is not a human, he's a symbol. Um, and, and symbols are very important too. Sometimes symbols can even be more important than the human who stands behind them. 
to be honest. It just worried me so, what, what some of the stuff that was coming out of her was was beyond was beyond the normal sort of cluelessness. It it, it seemed malicious to me. I mean, I, I I'm not on the level of Rachel Maddow. But... I don't know. I don't know. You know, you can be. I know that you can be wrong. I don't follow Amy's uh, current career very very closely or the material that you're talking about. Um, the last I dealt with her was during um, um, during the op art stuff when I appeared on Democracy Now! and, and whatnot. It was quite a show, and me and Amy had quite an emotional discussion before the show. Um, Amy's a friend, but like I said, my friends can be wrong, and, and, and people I know can be wrong, and I can be wrong. Um, this is the problem with fame fags. This is the problem with worshipping heroes is yeah. that um, well, sometimes can I just say thank you, fall, so. thank you so much for spending, you know, less staying no up problem. really super late so and coming and beyond. talking to us. Uh, many blessings to everybody. A blessing to Nat for, for have, uh, helping to get me here. Yeah. Allison, keep your chin, keep your chin up. You're on the front line there in London. Um, you're in an incredible historic place from anonymous's point of view. Actually, Trafalgar Square is quite a. Mm. a, a, a uh, almost a, a shrine, a really just shrine for us. So yeah. um, stay strong and you'll you'll find a way to, to be powerful if you just believe um, in the power of, of, of this information and your laptop and, mm. and learn and, and use your lockdown tower wise so you, you'll be surprised. And everybody okay. else are just out there to get busy and we'll get this done. We'll be successful. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Commander X. Okay, so I was about to just um, talk to Fiona, and I really, really want to talk to Fiona because, um, and I couldn't get hold of Sally. Um, I did try, but her it didn't sound like any any sound was coming from there when I unmuted her. Um, so, uh Fiona. Um, Fiona's been running events since, I think, probably since almost I got involved in Wellington from day one because she was one of the people that um, w was responding to my mails even when I had no platform at all. <laughs> um, and um, so Fiona immediately got on board and I just want to um, thank you so much for because what you've done in Auckland is far surpasses what I've managed in on the ground in Wellington. I know I'm doing a lot of things in the background, but I haven't done a great job on the Wellington. Wellington protests and not not like I would like to and I'm really proud of what you've achieved in Auckland and I'm hoping Charlene has got the invitation too has she is she um I, I think she's listening in yes. great okay I'll make sure that maybe Joe if you can make sure that Charlene is up on the video maybe she could share her video with us as well and also please chat and let Joe know if anyone else wants to come and talk and if you're having to go or if we can help you with a tech problem or anything like that so Fiona um, over to you. Okay, well, I got on board actively in 2018. Um, I had written a few blogs about um, the three special truth guys, that's Julian Assange, Manning, and um, I'm having mental blanks here, you know the one I mean. Um, Snowden. Yeah, all three. I had been writing blogs about that previously and then somehow I got onto a Facebook page and made contact with Davey Hillier in Australia and he helped to put up the you know New Zealand page on Facebook and asked me if I would start doing something and I was a bit nervous but I actually found Charlene she offered to come along with me so for nearly a whole year from 2018 to 2019 it was just two of us, <laughs> or sometimes three, um, my husband or one of her sons, but basically just the two of us and um, nobody else. But we went all over the place. We hung signs over the motorway and got toots and waves. We went outside the Herald newspaper, outside TV3, um, outside the US Embassy, UK Embassy, made a noise, stuck up posters, took videos, um, and I made a lot of flyers with information because every second person we met hadn't even heard of Julian Assange at that stage mm. because of the silence of the media. And would you say um, that's different now um, after uh, you know, a year and a half, two uh, years? Yes. Yeah. I sense the tide is turning, that we, we're not getting so many anti um, responses. We used to have a lot of people yelling at us, he, he's just a rapist, you know, rushing off, but they never stopped to hear why he wasn't. 
<laughs> but, you know, they just were ignorant people, you know, brainwashed by the media. But um, this last year, 2019, we've had a lot of more, a lot more people coming on board. Uh, I had a meeting in a cafe mid last year and we had about 12 people that came and I got all the email addresses and we've had a lot more turning up, especially at the UK embassy. And last time we had 19. So that that's a record for here. I know it's miserable compared to the rest of the world, but I don't know what's wrong with Kiwis, but they need a rocket launched somewhere <laughs> to yeah, get I them think, going. I think our maximum is about 20, 25 maybe, and that was the very first one, um, June, yes. June 19 and um, 2018. Yeah. Um, that was the, is it seven year in the embassy? I think that was what was going on. Right. Davy, um, I was trying to get on board with Davy's global protest because whilst being in Unity 4J, my frustration was that we were only doing the online thing and we weren't doing the on ground stuff. So I wanted to really help Davy with his stuff right. and helped him with graphics and things. And so, yeah, he was one of the things. But one of the things, the most powerful things that I think I saw you um, do, I mean, apart from Charlene on her own with the sign was a really powerful one that went quite viral. Mm -hmm. Um, but was yeah. the was the um, the media call out the media campaign that we had that was really small, but it was fantastic mm -hmm. for you in Auckland because in TV and Z I think came out of their office and had oh, to yeah. deal with you outside. Yeah, two security guards and <laughs> they told us to move on. But yeah, the last demo we had um, outside the UK embassy, um, three times the building manager has come out and got very irate and told us to move on. And the third time he didn't come out, he called the security company and two guys arrived in the car and they went inside and then came out and told us we had to move at least a meter away from the building and take all the posters off, etc. cetera. And um, we'd actually, <laughs> uh, with Sally, um, who got a busker across the road she paid him some money to come over and play lovely songs for us right outside the UK embassy. And then every second or third song, he let us use his microphone to speak our little bit about Julian Assange right in front of the embassy. Oh, I'm so <laughs> sad that Sally can't um, do her sound. Maybe, Joe, can you yeah. chat with Sally and see if you yeah. can fix Midnight Poetry Band's sound? Yeah. Oh, okay, we're just going live, Fiona, I mute him because he doesn't realize that he's on. So sorry about that, everybody. Oh, Let me go okay. back to you. <laughs> okay. So um, what I've been doing, um, I'm not that computer savvy and I don't think I'll ever be a hacker, but you never know. Um, I like to make memes, and this is one I've sent to the royal family. I've sent it to um, Judge Arbuff. Um, and I just keep texting, I mean, not texting, tweeting Trump. Trump tweeted him today, just, you know, every time he puts a comment up like Happy Easter, you know, I'd just say, well, it's not a very happy Easter for the guy that's sitting in Belmarsh Jail. And this is why, you know, and I just put, you know, pre-planned extradition executed by your administration, blah, blah, blah. Just go for the jugular. Yeah, I thought your idea about um, focusing on the royal family when we realised that um, oh. Prince Andrew had been so disgraced and that there was such hatred at the time for establishment. Um, I really loved your idea uh, of kind of trying to attach onto that anger you know i mean it's a probably a negative type of campaign but i the same time the whole what did you call it you you had a name um, for it we're, we're changing the guard at buckingham palace that's it i thought it'd be great to get protesters at the gates with those signs up yeah i think that was a <laughs> but, fantastic idea i think this is the secret i think um uh, times like Ian's and Unity 4J's, the, the World Press Freedom spamming was fantastic. Um, and that's because purely because we got to them in the, you know. In fact, I think the Twitter change happened shortly after that, where suddenly Twitter users can hide um, replies and they can decide that they don't want their reply to appear and all sorts of things that can now happen. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, yeah, those those campaigns, I think, where you kind of get out of your silo and you just go and launch into something else. They don't last for very long because you get shut down and censored pretty quick, but I think they're a really, yeah. really effective way. And with that World Press Freedom thing, um, getting people to go and do rogue speeches, and I did my own at that breakfast um, in, um, yeah, the breakfast at the New Zealand Parliament. And we can share that later once everyone's had a chat yeah. and even anyone's interested at the end of the live stream. But but um, the idea of getting into their little world and and giving them a truth bomb really publicly. Um, okay. Okay. So you're sharing the screen, are you, um, Fiona? No, it's not me. Who's sharing the uh, screen? Hi. It's me, a Deb. Hi. Oh, hi, Deb. I didn't see you there. You're just sharing your screen. Are you not doing oh, video? Free the truth. Yeah, it just came in two hours ago. Oh, okay. So, um, do you want to? Sorry, I'll just jump. I've just been talking uh, to yeah. Fiona. Um, did you want me to jump to you and 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 say what you've been doing? Because you've oh. been making some wonderful graphics and doing some wonderful tweets on Facebook as well. Oh, I'll I'll let Deb do her thing now. I'm just going to go and say goodbye to my guests that are in the lounge, and I'll okay. be back. <laughs> Right, fantastic. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. So I'm going to go back over to Dibs now, who was about to share the screen. Uh, uh, yeah, so Senator Surfer is his um, is the Twitter handle for Senator w uh, sorry, um, Wish Wilson is a senator in the Australian Parliament. So he has um, been plugging away trying to get Assange home. And I just saw this t um, Twitter um post that he made um from two hours ago where he's asking parliament again to get him out of prison and bring him home so we can um, all jump so onto he's... that um if you if you share your in the chat you can share the link to that and we can all jump onto that and promote it you can go to participants and then from there you can select like you could just send it to me if you wanted to or whatever. oh okay, okay. right I, i'll try and get there okay uh We've got a wonderful visual going on at, um, at Midnight Poetry Cafe. I'm kind of really tempted to do that. And I'm wondering, Paddock, you came on live temporarily, and then I wondered if you wanted to be on as well. Like, you'll feel free. Ah, oh, there's my Midnight Poetry Band. Hey. Back on now. I'm not sure if you can hear me, Alex. So I tried to set it up so we should be able to hear each other. Can I you hear me at all? I can just hear someone talking. It was very quiet. Yeah, but I my stuff quite a bit. Uh, probably going to need to be a fair bit louder though. How about that? Is that okay? Uh, yeah, a fair bit louder compared to the rest of the levels and fair I've got louder. nothing for Midnight like Poetry Band. Uh, channel D, channel way up, push the gain up. Uh, this is Paddock Radio. We're live to air, I think. We should be quite a bit louder now um, <laughs> because we get quite a lot of gain going through our system. Is that sounding better there, Alex? Um, yes, and I've also got a message here from Nat who'd like to speak because she's been waiting up a long time and I went to her earlier, but um, but only briefly. So, but um, it, it, are you okay. doing something right now, Paddock? Is there something you want to... Uh, just quickly, I thought I'd, I'd drop in and say uh, I was listening to what Commander X was saying before about how uh, getting the message out is the most important part and I strongly agree with that. Yeah. Uh, how, you know, if you're doing as much media as you can get out, it doesn't really matter if... Because um, we were wondering, we had the same thing with the Ian Martel uh, protest as well, where they were worrying, does it matter if we've got these sorts of, um, uh, if we've got support from all over the place, but a lot of Destiny Church turned up and that sort of thing. I'm not sure. Uh, but Maybe we I, should I tell people, also that not... because we've got people from out, outside of New Zealand, maybe we should explain to them what Ian Martel is, is um, and what it's about. And I know Sally can't speak right now, so maybe you can she give can. an overview. That, that's why I wanted to drop into the voice and say ah, that uh, Midnight Poetry was saying that they fixed their uh, microphone, I think. So Midnight Poetry, are you guys there? They're unmuted, they but still not hearing anything screen. from them. They've got the thumbs oh, up, but we're not hearing anything, I'm afraid, Paddock. <laughs> oh, wow, well, that's a shame. Oh. Yeah, well, that, that'd be the best to talk to you about that because uh, Ihimata was a, 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 it was a protest that we had for some, getting some uh, land back off the government that was uh, historically uh, owned by a local tribe. Now, they had a big, um, a large protest out in South Auckland about it. They ended up occupying a large amount of area. But one of the main things that they did was they put a big call out on all of their Facebook pages and they put a big call across 
uh, it went quite viral and lots of people were saying, oh yeah, you know, um, it's really good. They had people coming in from all over the country. Suddenly they had thousands of people on site. But then they started realizing that they were getting support from groups that they wouldn't traditionally uh, associate with, like uh, they had one from Destiny Church, which is a mega church out here in South Auckland, who brought buses out with thousands of their supporters. And they said, well, it's great that they've got support, but they these guys also have some pretty uh, nasty policies as well. Uh, they do tithing and things, which a lot of people didn't really uh, agree with. Another main thing that they did was um, they had they ended up having uh, gang members showing up as well. So I think the the local Black Power was there, and the local Mongrel Mob was there, and um, they were all there shoulder to shoulder. And and you know, uh, sort of people weren't sure how it was going to go, but it was quite respectful towards the end of the day. And I said when I was looking at it, I was saying this is really interesting how. Um, what would you do if you know Westboro Baptist Church suddenly started saying they want to support the cause? Are you going to let them do it because you want your cause to be supported, or do you want to, you know, um, are you going to pick and choose and and realistically yeah. uh, make your playing field smaller? Uh, which that was I mean, um, that was one of the things certainly that came up um, quite a bit with Unity for J. Um, we we essentially put the you know, hard line down that you needed to leave your political, your, you know, whatever it was at the door. And we were there solely for the purpose of, um, of Julian Assange. And we got a lot of criticism for um, allowing right wing you know, um, people into, into unity for Jay and, and the similarly, you know, socialists and very, you know, everyone, everyone said, well, why are you letting those people? In? Well, we're letting them in because they've agreed like everyone else to leave their, leave their chip on their shoulder at the door mm. and focus just on uniting for Julian. And I think that's that's where if you can unite over a common cause and leave a lot of that baggage out the door, and um, then certainly, you know, certainly things work a bit better. Um, unity. <laughs> unity in our diversity. We've, we've got so much, so many different ways of looking at things and so much diversity, but if we can find that little bit of unity, um, and Julian is a fantastic cause to unify behind because, as people have said, he brings together so many of those <laughs> key issues, those hot topics and those those things that we, well, our entire lives and liberties depend on. Well, um, I so, think yeah, one of the interesting totally things about that story um, about Unity 4J being tarnished as supporting and platforming right-wing people um, is that Cassandra Fairbanks, who was one of the people, I think the two that they had a problem with, or maybe three, Ian Stranahan because he'd worked for Breitbart and, and Cassandra Rules because she'd supported Trump, um, but she came from being a Bernie supporter originally and that's actually why she got such a huge platform and got onto the Trump campaign and all that sort of stuff. And then Cassandra Fairbanks rules actually suddenly worked out what was going on a lot earlier than anyone else and um, one of the things we found out was that she had an inside link and she was one of the people that warned Julian in the embassy um, that he was about to get arrested out of there and she and he had a conversation in person passing notes whispering with radio noise in the background and um, Basically, everything they shared was shared with the CIA instantly, and we can prove it because within seconds she got a phone call as soon as she left the embassy, saying, "What have you done?" Um, you, you know, and she tweeted out just something from ABC, and she made some connections and managed to push the story out, and and so they were horrified. But what what she um, has recently released and I've put it on my channel as a video as well was that this is entirely proving that, that, that the CIA was spying on Julian and that Trump made that order himself and with Ecuador through Grinnell um, and all of that is, is public information. It was even published on ABC, but she had connected the dots and they were horrified and they threatened her and they threatened her children. Um, and so she went, she went public with it. And it was a relief really, because all those days that were, she was, was smeared and yet look at her. She's been one of the hardest hardcore supporters. I don't know if people saw her outside the embassy in Ecuador embassy in London, but she was actually interviewing 
the surveillance team in their cars, knocking on their windows, even pretend, like even when they were pretending not to be related to it and they were standing on the pavement having a fag, that she, she managed to get some live stream of, of those very people that pulled Julian out of the embassy. And that's one of the things that's crucified the Q story a little bit. It's kind of shown that Q has kind of been disinforming people about you know, Trump will get a pardon for for Julian and it's all going to be fine. Just sit back and trust the plan. And that's one of the things that Cassandra Fairbanks's recent revelations, basically whistleblowing, has, has shown. Um, don't you think, Joe? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so, yeah, I think a lot of her, what she was saying was justified in the end. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I might, yeah, you know, I think I think between us is, I mean, I see in this um, in the Zoom here, there's there's people who are political, you know, the other end of the spectrum from yeah. from me, and and certainly, you know, I've found points of commonality, um, oh, and we so might many, all have our so many our points of hotter issues, but yeah, I but, mean, basically, you know, we're we all we arguing have. on polarizing issues, and but right yeah. now, Joe, if I can, unless someone else is really really urgent, can I go over to Nat's because Nat's been waiting patiently, and I tried to get um, her to talk before, yeah, but yeah, there you it. are, Nat. Why don't you um, chat? You're already unmuted. Uh, thank you. Well, I wanted to thank you before um, for letting me put Mexico in the map of this uh, cause. It, it has taken me many, many years. I've been doing this for many, many years, and I always felt like it was just me. There's not a lot of people here who know who Assange is. Uh, the fact that the Mexican president talked about him a couple of months ago helped a lot but it's still we are lacking a lot of support from Mexicans. So it has been really, really important for me uh, to have you uh, put, putting Mexico in the map. Oh, well, it's a pleasure. It's, very I mean, shy. <laughs> it's a pleasure. And I mean, it's the least I can do. I haven't not done a whole lot of this stuff other than just listing other people's events. And I'm fully relying on all these people on coming through. And you've been amazing. Mexico has really punched above its weight. I feel like New Zealand has punched above its weight as well here. Um, maybe not in the government <laughs> or the media here, but certainly in the activist community and um, in some indie journalists, people like Ed. Um, mm -hmm. Now, um, sorry, Nat, can I just do a sound check for the Midnight Poetry Band? Otherwise, they're going to have to. Um, Midnight Poetry yes. Band, you're unmuted already. Are you are you now live? So they're not coming up because they're not screening. I just uh, got asked to do it again, but I don't think it's working. So I'll go back to Nat. Nat, you carry on. Sorry. No, just um, maybe do you have questions or something you can I can start yeah. talking about yeah well um so I was wondering what the lockdown is like there um what 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 the sort of mode of that is and how you feel protests may be affected in the past because you've you've had a little bit of success there and I've seen things in the media and I've seen that your um, president supports Julian has specifically made a statement that's right isn't it Yes, so he made a statement. Uh, so it was very important because many, many, many people who don't uh, know who Assange is started like uh, finding out about this. So it was very important. But on the other side, sorry, I'm not very fan of the president. Um, he, he only mentioned him once and there he didn't mention Chelsea or he hasn't been like following this situation. Uh, I, I know Assange's mom thank him in Twitter and everything. And it was, um, it put us Mexicans in the map for, for a few days, but I would love him to keep uh, mentioning him and talking about the, the importance of the case. But I think it was just like for a, it was a glimpse of hope yeah. that and, I feel just disappeared. And, and how's the lockdown and the situation with protesting? Like, do you feel like you can go out on a solo protest and not, not have problems or is it just frowned upon and you end up causing grief? Well, we've been having uh, like the national emergency uh, health situation for, I think it's almost two weeks, but it, it's, it's, we can go out. And I mean, it's like Fiona was saying, it's just two or three of us. So we can still be able to go outside. 
and protest in the streets. Mm. Great. Okay. Well, that's good to hear. And I mean, I was delighted to see that the president did support, but I understand, you know, it's a pretty similar situation I have with Jacinda because in um, Mm -hmm. New Zealand, we've done very well. We've got one death and there's even questions of if it was even really 100% a corona thing or just not just being infected with corona. So we're doing really well. We're up to four deaths now. Because of Jacinda. (laughs) There was two more today. There was two more deaths. There was two more oh, deaths so that's today. Old news. That's bad news. All, all over, over, um, over seventies. Right. Okay. So you could you could commend, and a lot of people be going, "Oh God, I wish Jacinda was our, you know, MP, uh, our president. Wouldn't that be great?" And I heard, I saw a lot of Americans and Australians doing this, and it was frustrating because of you you know you know that that on the one hand she signed the TPP, um, there's disinformation, there's censorship. She really went and did a deal with Macron and 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 organised world censorship after the Christchurch. You know, there's um, supporting war. <laughs> there's I mean, there's been a little bit of the environment and plastic that's been improving here. And in general, I think she's a compassionate leader in some ways. She donated money to the to the um, Clinton Foundation and has pictures hugging Hillary, which seems incredible if you were knowledgeable, um, I guess. Uh, this was after she'd lost the election as well. And so we might have complaints with the National Party having donated 14 million of our tax to a criminal cabal. But we also have the problem of our new other party government doing exactly the same thing, even though Hillary had lost. So it's amazing um, contradiction. It's sort of cognitive dissonance in a way, isn't it? Both parties are the establishment. <laughs> That's why the Internet Party is the only solution. <laughs> oh, well, maybe we won't call it the Internet Party, maybe because that will alienate oh, yeah. people. <laughs> so. The people, the people. You got to bring the people into it. Okay, so I've had another request from Midnight Poetry Band. I'm going to hey. come back. Are you going to go? Oh, okay. I will say goodbye yeah. to you then first, Nat. Please do do thank say you your so goodbye. Thank you so much for inviting me. You're absolutely welcome, and thank you for mm-hmm. everything you've done. We are so proud of you in Mexico, and I do thank think that you. one of the things that did in- attract people was the fact that I um I was making those candles for Assange maps, and I was putting um icons in my paint <laughs> application on <laughs> word you know because i didn't i couldn't be bothered to come up here to this office where mm-hmm. i could get photoshop and so i'd just be doing these crappy little very crude graphics but the thing is everybody wanted their flag to appear on it and mm-hmm. i noticed people who weren't even intending to do a protest they they were trying to get me to put a flag on it and they were happy that they were going to see some support there even if it was just sort of virtual and they weren't even going to turn up with a candle but i think yeah, that was one of the key um yeah and i think now that we're virtual i think probably the key is like truman has been suggesting but only manually um is is a schedule um a, an organized way of of focusing people locally into groups to do these group zoom chats with mps or group you know attacks of one person on one day in order to really hit it home that we can do this anytime and if we want to do it for four weeks we can, we've got enough people to fill every hour for four weeks you know if there's a schedule where people can go oh yeah mexico is calling between one and three and canberra is calling between two and four and you know like what <laughs> whatever it is do you need to it's say okay. anything else before you go? You're just going to no. say No. Okay. Thank you so much. I have to go. Okay. Thank you. I'm very Thank nice you again. you all. Ciao. All right. Ciao. All Bye. right. Midnight Poetry Band, you are still unmuted. So can you make some noise? Oh, and I'm going to come to you, Elizabeth. I see you up there. <laughs> Hello. Yes, I've still got noise. And do I need to look at the chat to do something? They're waving again. Do we need Paddock? Uh, this is Paddock Radio. Uh, you live to air on all of our channels. And we're actually just on a Zoom call at the moment. We just heard from Matt from Mexico. And uh, where are you guys from? Drop your drop your uh, locations in the chat. Look, I was just wanted to say when you were talking about having multiple Zoom chats and uh, multiple people connected around the world, look, I'd love to be involved with that. And I'd like to open the offer to the floor. And anybody you run into, if they want to record a two-hour show, just if you do a Zoom chat, just record it, um, record the audio and send it to me. That's um, music at paddockradio.net or paddockradiolive at gmail.com. I'll put it in the chat. But uh, what I want to do is invite people to do 
whatever you do, any of your audio, anything like that, um, please try and make sure there's no music in it that you're not allowed to use. But otherwise, we're we're a pirate station, so we'll just run it anyway. But it just means you get cut off faster. That's all. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to open it up to you guys. Uh, I can still hear you guys as well. So I think I might have changed my audio settings now that I can actually talk to people. Um, Alex, can you hear me? I think you're still muted, actually. I'm yeah. muted, but I was just wondering, um, can you hear Midnight Poetry Band or is there any way to get their sound working? Because I would love to hear from them. But if I can't hear from them next and no one else wants to say anything, I'd love to talk to Elizabeth Mueller because she's got some amazing experience on activism, but also TPPA, but also f from being targeted as an activist, which I'm very interested to hear about as well in terms of relations. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got noise? Hello, can you oh, hear us? Oh, hello, Midnight Poetry Band. Welcome. Oh, they can ah! hear us. Oh, Aaron, my gosh. Aaron, they can hear you. Like, uh, we've, <laughs> tell them. we've just plugged in with um, headphones, so we've finally got communication channels flowing. Can you hear just me, or can you hear Sally as well? Hi. Yeah, love you. you. Oh, good, good. All right. Yeah, we're more here for moral support and visual um you know, oh, it's support. Been fantastic but we were going to do your, a little show for the open mic. Oh, good, good. Um, yeah, we do have a um, some music to play, and like uh, maybe at the end or whenever we at finish. The, or at the end to wrap up, rather than oh, well, we don't want to interfere now, with like, the intellectual flow. Without tomfoolery. That's <laughs> uh, all, all good to have yeah. some entertainment in the background. What are they even saying, Joe That's great to be able to hear yeah. you now. Um, so what I could do is, while well, Midnight Poetry Band is sorting themselves out, I might just want to just go over and talk to Elizabeth because I see her waiting there for some time, and I'm going to unmute you now. You're okay? But um, I've just unmuted you, Elizabeth. Hi. Hello. Hi, everyone. I'm live in my shower. You and, are. Um, <laughs> so it's my shower curtain. And it's like almost five in the morning, so I hope I sound coherent. Um, yeah, I don't even know what to talk about. I was throwing up some ideas in the live stream chat, and so I thought I'd just reiterate them. Some of you have heard me talk about these things like numerous times, so I don't want to be repetitive. But um, so, yeah, so for those of you who don't know me, I led a group of about 15,000 to stop TPP in um, USA. and. Turned out I was one of the largest, if not the largest independent group in the USA, which I sort of found out the hard way after I was being targeted. Um, so I don't even know where to begin, but the three things that I wanted to share that were really effective when I was organizing against the TPP, and they weren't all my ideas, there were other groups that worked on these things, but one is, I, well, I'm not tech savvy. I need someone who's tech savvy um, to possibly develop a tool and um, the tool is to send letters to the editor. And what it is, is you just put in your zip code or whatever it is over in the UK, and um, it will go to all the local newspapers, especially the medium-sized newspapers, because we know the large ones are probably not going to print any kind of letter to the editor for Julian Assange, but maybe they will. So um, if anyone out there is really good at creating, I don't know what to call it, like a tech tool, we had a group that did that. and. Um, you know, I, it, it involves like pollinating databases, which is way over my head. But anyway, um, if you can do that, that would be great. The other thing is um, I'm very interested in this and I would love a lesson on how to do live projections on the sides of buildings because wouldn't that be cool to just drive around in your car and like have this moving billboard and redirect them to our live streams and redirect them to our um, web pages? to our other actions and get them to also wake up their neighbors and have like music and bullhorns and be like, everyone, coronavirus, wake up, like, you know, and free Julian Assange and just go to like apartment buildings and start doing like a huge information campaign on the sides of buildings. I thought that would be really cool because you guys are already doing that in London anyway. Let's just take it to the next level. And that's one idea. And then the other thing was, um, what was my other idea? Um, well, I already have something on Facebook. Of course, Facebook since then has been like gutted since the stock TPP call team was like alive and well. But um, I do have a free Julian Assange call team on Facebook. Um, I think it's under, on Twitter, I just created a page and 
already I noticed that Twitter has taken some of the things down. I think it took down maybe even all of the numbers in the US. Um, actually, I had the numbers in the US, the UK, and Australia for how to call your reps on both of these pages. Um, so on Facebook, if you look up uh, free Julian Assange call team, that's been going for quite some time. It's just that Facebook is so dead, it hasn't grown like my Stop TPD call team did. I only have like 100 people, whereas my Stop TPD call team grew to be about 15,000 people. So that just show you how much they've limited the algorithms. Yeah, I totally um, sympathize with that. I mean, um, with the yeah. email format thing, um, Australian, Australian Assange campaign have got this automatic email system and I know some people maybe that could connect with you there and we've also got Joe Booth here's technical here what I was doing previously was well he's running the live stream at the moment as well but um, what I was trying to do on the website at one point was I had all these theoretical protest locations and I had a database populating maps and each time you lick, clicked on a, an icon in your local area I could have added an organizer to that icon or a date or whatever and put it out there but unfortunately Google stopped supporting this on fusion tables and I haven't been able to do it in such a way the problem is that if you are a person that's not making profit and you have 20,000 people visiting a map and you're starting to pay on a basis of users you can't do that anymore so I too had to take down all my maps that were this wealth of information in there was senators numbers in there was social media contacts twitter accounts everything of all of them as a database and fusion tables just went offline and i couldn't do it anymore so that was really really frustrating that one and what i was saying before i don't know if you missed it but that um, there's been some feedback that the the same letter each time doesn't necessarily work it's good because of bulk but what's what might be better is a kit of parts situation where you can copy and paste a few different good phrases in any order you like <laughs> um or something like that yeah i missed that part but um actually just so you know we we did we had sort of like a pre-written one for people that just didn't want to bother and then you could edit so you're right that is very important just not to have a canned letter absolutely yeah um I'm trying to think if there's some other question that I had for you guys. Um, the the projection that. one um, regarding the projection. Now I've forgotten the name and I've been trying to search it, but there's a there's a, there is an organisation on Twitter, Pixel Art or Pixel is something subversive and protesty, but they are fully able to if you can do the fundraising to get the high powered projector because obviously it needs a really really high powered one everyone can do it with a small home projector but to get those ones that melbourne and maybe london did um don't extradite assange campaign would be good people to see who got them to do it but i have a feeling pixel art or pixel something on facebook if you search assange and pixel the word you might find it but um, i have seen them before and they they do do that massive scale Okay, I didn't know how expensive it was. I was trying to read articles and some of them said you could do it on a really tight budget, but um, you guys probably have already seen, I'm, I'm struggling, so I don't know if I'll, it'll be in my budget. Yeah. But um, um, I'm trying to see if there was anything else I was gonna add to, uh, I'm sorry, I should have written things down. I feel like the social isolation has like made me forget how to speak. So I'm, struggling. I'm like, I start using sign language. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know if there's anything else that I was going to say. I just, I think the most important thing is just to keep on widening the circle. Oh, I know another thing. Um, one of the things I used to do is stay up really late at night and I would go to all of the mainstream outlets like CNN, ABC, whatever. Um, and I would just, you know, now, now you'd have to use like a different account, like probably an alternative account that you are willing to sacrifice if it gets banned. But I was able to use my own account and I would get like 50 people per night to come over to my page and join my group. And I would just sit there like relentlessly and play music all night and be like, all right. And I would do like a hunt, like about 100 comments. I would give myself like a, a goal, like, OK, 100 comments per night. And they would always be like, you know, you, they made a rule that you have to comment, like, say it's CNN and they put up an article about coronavirus or something like that. You have to have your comment have to do with whatever they posted about coronavirus. So then you just say things like, you know, coronavirus. Well, that's really interesting. But did you know that Julian Assange is actually a political prisoner? And I wanted you to know this. And then you put in the link and you put it, you know, and before back then we could put in like memes that were the same size as the article. So I had like cat memes galore all over the place. So it was pretty, 
it, yeah, you can do a lot. You can hijack the, the hashtags. It's a really good idea. Um, I've written things on kitten pictures before um, in desperation and in frustration because I do realise that everyone on Facebook anyway that sees my posts are all 100% activists and probably a few trolls and <laughs> that's it and I've got a lot of local <laughs> friends who know, who don't haven't got a clue what I do uh, and probably you know uh, I, I've tried to talk to some of them but you know how you give up with your local friends because you just can't deal with after a certain amount of time can you <laughs> it's too much um yeah but i've certainly noticed a, a massive cut down in 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 that reach so those sort of tricks are, are so valuable i definitely agree and they'll call you a russian spy only they'll call you a dog meme or a puppy meme instead of a cat meme but i'm a cat yeah but I well, also... on facebook <laughs> if i write uh, 21 trillion lost by the pentagon on a cute picture of a kitten and I go, oh, look at this cute kitten. And no other words. <laughs> it actually gets through to everyone. And I notice suddenly um, all these friends, actual real world friends from down the road, were seeing it. And that would never happen. So I've noticed a discernible difference. In fact, I noticed this in New Zealand, this kind of censorship and blocking, this shadow banning, I think, before many people did. And I think they tried it out on New Zealand first because we were so passive. And then... Um, I sort of I was in a lot of Bernie groups once once upon a time when I thought that that was the, the way forward. Um, 2016, so you'll have to forgive me. Um, but yeah, the, the, I was in a lot of Bernie groups, and I used to tell American friends, "There's something going on. Like, there's a difference between a post that's political and a post that's like a kitten." And they would go, "Oh, don't be silly," because they were still all getting 50 likes for po posts with a, whether it was a kitten or, or a political post. That was not available to me during the Bernie days when I was in a hundred Bernie groups. And I was telling people and they thought I was a conspiracy theorist. And now everyone knows this is the case. And so I wonder whether they actually guinea pig does here in New Zealand. I don't know if anyone else thinks that who's from New Zealand. Well, it's possible. I mean, I, that's what our, my group was kind of known for was the cat meme thing. Although it's obviously like, it's a joke because it's so cliche. Everyone uses it. But um, I've even thought about writing the entire history of the Stop TVP battle in Cat Me and just like, publishing it into a book. I've just but clicked we... your name on Twitter is Cat Mima. I guess I'm Cat Mima. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Now I get it. Now I get the joke. I didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was the whole – We, we st like, so what I did is – and the thing is – okay, I have to finish one thought at a time. Um, I use Cat Memes, but with a subject like Julian Assange's life, it's very hard to keep it humorous. Do you know what I mean? Like, I do. It's, you know, you have like a little kitten that's like talking to its mom, like, mom, why are they gonna try to kill Julian? You know, like, like you try to make it very innocent and very understanding at a child's level so that people are very emotionally engaged. But, um, I think sarcasm that. is fine because I think the algorithm doesn't understand sarcasm. And mm -hmm. that was actually the thing that, that, that made me realize that the censorship was full on and had changed from one day to the next. It was because I'd posted up a sarcastic text only post on Facebook, which said, vote for Hillary so that Syrian gas pipes can flow across into, not into Russia and into here. And so that all these Donald Rumsfeld can profit from Genie Energy. And, you know, it was like the most sarcastic post you've ever seen with a whole bunch of crimes, war crimes, everything all listed. And obviously there weren't enough keywords in there because that post on my Facebook somehow got artificially pinned to the top of my page. And for three months after I'd made that sarcastic post during the primaries, that, that stupid post about Hillary that was completely sarcastic sat there and it wasn't my page. It was my own timeline and you can't do that. So I suddenly I thought what's going on here this is strange I had to actually delete the thing in order to get it off uh, it was bizarre it's very strange well um well um other than that I mean I if anyone else wants to talk you're welcome to the only other thing I was gonna there's something else that keeps running through my head and like well, running back out this chat to oh, us gonna... and we'll bring you back later and I'll go oh. back to the midnight poetry band in a bit and see if they are ready to do their thing unless someone else is waving to me profusely somewhere or if Joe knows of someone in chat that needs to be heard I saw that David um David's on the chat um outsider um let's see if I can yeah a few of our uh, YouTube of regulars have popped Unity into crew. the room to yeah their quality Hey, um, one thing I did want to um, mention, it was, it was sort of a, a, a probably applies more to me as a tech person. Um, I do tech for fun, right? 
um, so my day job is is physical on the ground, and and hence I'm I've got a enforced holiday for four weeks, which is where a lot of this um, sort of stuff ends up um, being a lot easier to do. I've got the time, um, and so certainly I I do re- remember the challenge that um, Elizabeth gave to us, Cam Emma, um, to build um, that letter to the editor tool, and certainly it's within you know technical capabilities of me myself and I. And um, it's just usually a matter of time um, amongst family. My darling gives me a look across the uh, across the um, links, but certainly there's there's a bit more time um, now that uh, we're all on lockdown and uh, and forced to stay home. And our only tools of communication are the ones that uh, are fairly native to me. Um, well, Joe, I'd like to give a big thank you to your wife who's allowed me to sit here and troubleshoot fake streaming to the internet all day <laughs> to try and do this properly. Totally. So um, I'm really sorry to her for um, screwing up your day. Is that all you wanted to say, oh, no, Joe? No, that's fine. No, that, that's all I wanted to say. Okay. So um, we have obviously Fiona. We've got we've just spoken to Elizabeth Mueller. We've got Paddy on um, live on radio, and if he ever wants to come back in, I guess um, chat or something like that. And I can see that. How about Midnight Poetry Band? Are you guys ready? I'm going to unmute you then. I want to hear what's going on in this imagery here. Let's hear you. All right. Can, can you hear us? Yep. yep. All right. Um, we have a song to play. Let me see if it. It works. But it just explained that we've got to lip sync it. Um, no, don't tell them. We we're, no, no. We're going to have um, music and performance if technology is willing. Um, we don't have time. So let, let us know if this music is coming through. Yeah. Am I not meant to play this one? I don't know how to make it so that we can see you and hear that. And I think the problem with um, you with Zoom is that it packets up sound so that music is impossible because I would have done violin and everything if I could. <laughs> so. um, but okay. obviously playing something in the background there. Yeah. Um, is it still? It's not muted, but it's not working now. So, um, yeah. Fiona, I want to come back to you because I don't think I fully fully finished talking to you. Oh, look, there's something going on there. We've oh, now got. <laughs> it's pretty psychedelic. It is very psychedelic to see you guys, it's Midnight awesome. Poetry Band, even if we can't hear what's going on and we can kind of imagine it. And I know that Sally is singing right now. Um, and Sally is fabulous. Sally is the unofficial tour guide of the Pussy Riot when they came to New Zealand. And that's how we got in touch. I've actually got a fantastic photograph of Sally uh, in a WikiLeaks t shirt with Timothy, my musical buddy and um maria from pussy riot which is one of the most fun photos and it's right in front of um new zealand parliament so that's kind of cool um and these guys actually if you look up the auckland we can go to some sharing screens later and do some stuff on facebook if we want to look at videos we can certainly do that um that is so gorgeous fiona what do you think you know you know these guys well too don't you because you're in auckland so 
you can probably fill us in on what's going on in the in the music department there. <laughs> um, yeah, well, they haven't really played on the street for us yet. Oh, <laughs> I saw good. something. Was that someone else playing? That was a busker that we enlisted from across the road, and we paid him some money to come and sing outside the UK embassy. Brilliant. <laughs> which, which he did. And then he let us use him up his microphone to talk. Oh, that's fantastic. And, and tell the story of the truth of Julian Assange. Nice. So, anyway, um, I don't really know what else to say except I feel like this whole thing is just basically a huge war on truth. Mm. Um, many, many areas um, and different levels right across the globe. Mm. And that... Um, there's a huge attempt to propagandize the whole population of the, this earth um, and get them to submit to a new world order, which is run by a group of elitists, and we do all their bidding, mm. which um, there's too many of us waking up for that to be possible right now, I think, which I'm wrapped about. I think um, <laughs> sometimes I, I my conspiracy is that they're using this virus right now is because it has got to that point. It's got to that point where the dissent was bubbling so much, you know, that, that we, are, we are there. That You know, um, as real as this is, I'm not saying it's not real, but I do feel that it's being jumped upon and amplified yeah. to the level that we've well, never seen. Yeah. Well, 20 years ago when they were kind of talking about how there was an attempt to bring in hate speech. I used to think that was so over the top and ridiculous that that would never happen. And now we see it happening all around the world. You know, if you, if you speak out of line with what they don't want to hear you say, that's hate speech. Mm. You know, anything's hate speech <laughs> if it doesn't fit in with the agenda or the propaganda. Yep. So Adrian that's what we face now, the, the world we live in. Yeah. Yes. No, I totally agree, so, Fiona, and I can't thank you enough for what you managed to achieve in Auckland. And I wish I was more organised. I wish I was more tech. And um, oh, I've but, got but I've got some bizarre that. skills, yeah. and I have done like geo mapping, geo coding, and so I thought I could put them to work. And yeah. then um, Fusion Google was just oh, ripped incredible. ripped out from underneath yeah, me. No, no, no. Um, have we got Mitchell here no, from yeah. for Assange? Ah, oh, so hang on, Fiona, I'm going to mute you for a minute yeah, unless you sure. have anything else to say. And then I've got, so who's that, Joe? Who have we got? Perth for Assange. Perth for Assange, shall I unmute you? Or is that not who I'm talking to? Unmute. Are you there, Perth for Assange? Yep, can you hear me? Yeah, awesome. You're on. So I'm Mitchell. Um, I started the Perth Western Australia group. I was actually from New Zealand originally, lived in Hamilton and Auckland, but moved here. I've lived here for now 10 years. Um, so I just wanted to share what we've been doing. So we first went out in January and we actually printed letters and then we had a space down here where people could sign their address and their name. And then that's the address we look up their federal politician and we send that letter, we go to the office and deliver the letter. So we did that about 10 times, three or four hours, we just set up the table, put our letters on the table, pens to sign the letters, and then just those 10 times, about three or four hours, we had 480 letters signed from people and we delivered them to basically every um, federal politician in our state. Um, and also we've had letters to the council. So we um, successfully got Fremantle Council, which was a city in Perth, it's on the coast, um, and they've supported Julian Assange. We've also sent 100 letters to um, the foreign minister, Maurice Payne. So I think if you guys like, think that's a good idea, I'd totally. definitely recommend it. <laughs> totally. <heaps> of support. <laughs> Yes, and and we need the skills, like the the thinking around these. And I think low tech is an answer, definitely. Paper signing, paper pellets as well, but um, faxes, faxes even. So the digital, if we can get the tech people to do to 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 cordon the sort of digital market and the scheduling of it, then maybe this low tech approach is mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah. I just you get a lot of people come up and they say. 
I never usually sign a petition like this or I never usually get involved in something like this, but this is just wrong. And and then you can also, um, we also have another piece of paper where people sign a petition and we ask them to put their email, put their phone number, and then we say, can we contact you? And they tick that box. And if they tick that box, then you can um, add them to your group or contact them about events, stuff like that. So that was actually a tip that we got from the Amnesty International president of um, WA. And I've also been talking to them. So... Are they They're supportive? Just- I mean, I know, sorry, I know that everyone knows that Amnesty Australia or Amnesty in general put out a, a petition three working days before the extradition trial, which in my book, I should probably not say this live, but in my book, because I've been actively campaigning against them, that that was an insult. And if, if you ask me, that was about getting fundraising. That was about capitalising on the peak time of anger and its interest and then making money out of it. So I've been at Amnesty for years. So I'd be very interested to hear if you've got a different story to tell about Amnesty, <laughs> please. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. Um, so I think it was late last year I called the um, Amnesty president of WA, which is the state where Perth is, um, and she agreed to have a meeting and we basically – I went with another person that I met on Facebook through my group and we just talked to her about the whole situation. And she basically understood. She said she was very supportive. She said she'd be willing to help with us. I was talking to the union that you have and the group. We just talked to the organisers of that and they also agreed to have a petition and the letters out at their tables. Actually, the Please support this action. Patrick is saying, please support this a- action. So that's um, okay. That's definitely right. Patrick is is off mute and off video at the moment. Ah, oh, there you are. Um, I lost Perth, and I thought maybe you could come back on for me, Patrick, and talk to us because you obviously like that idea that you just heard from Perth, and I want to I want to go back to him because that. I mean, I know people have been saying this before, but the actual idea of physically getting their signature is brilliant, and I don't know why we haven't done that here. I was not paying attention to it, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I just was jumping on because we lost um, we lost Perth, and Perth were just talking about how they were printing out quality letters that basically most people can't disagree with, um, and getting people to physically sign paper copies and having a whole bunch of them, and they've managed to send off about 400 letters to MPs by physically getting addresses. So hopefully we'll get him back soon. I don't know what happened, but he seemed to cut out. He must have left the meeting accidentally. So I just thought I'd jump to you because you were there. No problem. So uh, we start this this campaign here with this uh, pictures. With the statement for this assault uh, behind bars, you have to take part, Alex. Yeah. I have a picture for you. Can you talk more uh, into the microphone, um, just so that we get uh, uh, as clear as possible? Okay. Can you hear me good? Is this okay? I can't. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, we started this uh, uh, campaign, I think, two weeks ago, and now we have uh, 60. 60 people uh, sending us pictures. Um, I, I think this is a quite good result for starting this for the first two weeks. So everybody clicking on this link, then looking at this little uh, video, um, I, I would uh, appreciate it if you can um, support this action. Yeah. Okay. Great. So um, we are definitely going to support that campaign, and I think we should all learn something potentially from um, from um, Perth there because it's just so low tech and so simple. It's just the sort of thing we need to get onto. Um, I wanted to ask Perth whether they had been fundraising their own money to to print out all this stuff, and whether they found any good ways of dealing with that. Um, but I'm not sure if they're hearing me. Sounds like sounds yep. gone. Yeah. Yeah, you can hear me. Yep, I can hear you. Ah, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um. So with the funding, no, I haven't actually got any funding, but a few nice people just—if I just mention that it costs money to print and uh, 
send the letters sometimes. If, if the parliamentarians are far away, I have to send a letter. It costs a dollar for the stamp. But they just give me like a $5 note or a $10 note. And, yeah, I've, I've had another guy on Facebook even send me $50. I've just kind of mentioned it to people but haven't really started my own fundraising because I don't want to kind of take away from the the main donations to WikiLeaks and stuff like that. Mm. And it's it's actually very cheap. So if you go to Officeworks, a black and white page is eight cents. So print a hundred for eight dollars. Um, a thousand envelopes I bought for thirteen dollars, and I wrap them all individually in the envelope so that whoever's opening them has to open them all. They don't just get a pile of the same pieces of paper and then can kind of like count them as uh, one yeah yeah right so they have to open each letter and uh yeah they have replied but usually the replies are just the the australian government is saying we cannot intervene um which is obviously not true because they have in the past for other journalists um there's a case of peter gresty yeah and also james rickettson was a filmmaker and there's clear evidence that our government did interfere. Um, even the foreign minister used the word intervene for intervention for one of those um, journalists previously. And now they're saying that Julian Assange. So I don't know. It's just. Well, I think that's an amazing um, endeavour that you've organised there and I don't know, even know why that sort of thing. I mean, I think MEB told me first about getting clipboards. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but we've got um, – uh, where is it there? Whoops. Yeah. I keep on going the wrong place. Um, we've got this Candles uh, sign-up sheet now and we only just started doing that recently. Um, I think – Patrick, one of the reasons Patrick's done so well is because he was just going out there every week at the same time, the same place, just made it a weekly date, and that just brought a whole lot of people on. That that consistency really worked there. Um, so these kind of ideas, they're so low-tech and simple, and I think we need to activate them in a really professional way. And I think mm. we have the skills. We've got the Joe, you know, we've got the Joe Booths who are technical, and, you know, we've got people that are a bit of jack-of-all-trades. I'm a bit like that. Um, mm. There's so many people that we can – get on board the the problem is that whenever you try to do anything like unity for j does or i don't know about the action for assange people how they've found it and they've certainly had a lot of trolls and agents on their streams and problems with their streams but i just i you know i wonder how you know other people are coping with it and whether it's going the same way for them <clears throat> sorry I'll just um, – so, Paddock, I see that you're live streaming us. I don't know if you want to talk um, or if you're in the middle of a live stream right now, but unless someone else specifically – maybe Joe can let me know if there's someone else who wants to talk. I can either um, – I'll just unmute you there, maybe, if it's unwise. I don't um, know. Yeah, well, if um, RSFO or um, Yvonne or any of the others that are sort of lurking in here just wanted to even just say something. Yvonne? To share video. Okay, um, I would love to um, hear. I would love to hear from some people. It would be good to hear from you. Yvonne, here we go. I'm going to unmute Hello. you. Hi. Hello. Welcome. I don't know. Um, probably I know you online and I don't know, um, but you're going to have yeah. to introduce yourself. I'm Evie online. I'm oh, from Vienna. Cool. Yeah, we do the candles. We were doing the weekly video videos yeah, cool. too. Yeah. In Vienna, uh, every Wednesday. Yeah. Um, I I wanted to say something. Well, thank you to you for all your help as well. No um, uh, I'm, I'm too a bit shy to speak really. Um, yeah, we we were doing very well, and we were reaching a lot of people really. Uh, because we were standing in the middle of Vienna and so I was talking to people from Mexico, from Greece, from Italy and we had a really good thing going and now it's um, a bit difficult because of um, it, what Patrick was talking about. It's a great idea, a one-person protest, but what happened to me was the day after um, Julian got arrested last year, I went to the British Embassy and stood outside the British Embassy with a sign that I made, don't extradite Assange, 
and the policeman from the embassy came over and said to me, are you having a laugh kind of thing? And he couldn't leave, the, I was across the road, he couldn't leave the boundaries of the embassy. And he said then, oh, well, you'll see, you'll see. And I thought, what is going on here? And I thought, it's so funny. And then all of a sudden, yeah, a police car turned up and I was escorted away and all my details were taken. So having a solo protest is quite difficult though over here I have to say I'm a bit afraid of it after after that and I went to actually the next day I made this t-shirt <laughs> and went uh, is that your the, sign never, behind you Yvonne is that yeah, your that's sign? sign yeah. that's the one yeah okay yeah, yeah, yeah that's the one that we hang up <laughs> yeah the one the one in the background it started off as a just oh I'll we'll go the other way the one in the background yeah. uh, it started off as a free Julian sign and then it became a free Julian Assange sign because we have worried that it's not enough one. people knew Knew who Julian was, which just surprised me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's 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 amazing actually that very many people don't know, and then the people who do know generally do support, like and do do like are, um, yeah, for his release or something. Yeah, so, but um, I don't know what I was going to say now. Yeah, solo protests and oh yeah, the other thing I wanted to kind of mention was. Um, that I can't remember now because like the days have all gone into one another, but we were actually in Parliament in Austria and the Austrian Parliament stood up. I mean, in this speech, I was trying to look for it to, to actually get the wording. I can't remember what the actual wording was, but they all stood up in support. It was whistleblowers and Assange. They kind of tend to over here, put him into the whistleblower thing. But I think they're doing that because of the European law. There's a new law for whistleblowers, so they're trying to, to for protection for whistleblowers, so they're trying to kind of push them into this bracket. I think I think that's what, what's going on. Mm. So actually, the whole of Parliament stood up and said that they were for his freedom and for uh, protection of whistleblowers, you know. And that, that's great. I am a, yeah, but I didn't see it anywhere. <laughs> no paper report. I was the only person and the woman from the Green Party uh, who actually said anything about it. I think this that is, amazing. we're always surprised by these things because, like I keep on saying, we're in these kind of crazy silos. And my only feeling of comfort from that, because it does increasingly frustrate me because I feel like I've been dealing with it, but my only um, comfort from that is that they are too in their own silo by definition and their silo is shrinking and ours isn't. And yeah. I understand where you're coming from. You feel like no one, like, how can no one know this? I'm always amazed and I always start talking at 100 miles an hour and then people have to, especially like if I go on local radio, people have to go, wow, that's a crazy allegation. Where have you got the facts? And they start to sort of pull you back down and sort of freak out. <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's so surprising to them and I'm amazed that they don't have any of this news because I'm in this bubble of Julian and um, anti-war and free press. And so I don't have a yeah. clue that these people what? haven't got a clue. <laughs> and that's why, you know, you see that the establishment is more and more out of touch and that's why the political parties are so out of touch. They're being advised based on a smaller and smaller and smaller audience. You know, you can see it. And uh, so I think yeah. we can be encouraged by that. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I mean, in, in general, though, I was listening uh, yesterday to a podcast where they were talking about um, how people, how, how, how do you say, like their ideas or beliefs in this day and age that we're getting so f fractioned, like a group of people believe this thing, like with the coronavirus is from China or it's from the USA or it's from Russia or it's this or it's that. And that the people's their beliefs are being like, we're all being kind of sectioned off into different. Yeah, there's so um, many things to divide us. Um, yeah. But we do need things to unite us. Yeah, yeah exactly, and I mean, yeah. in some ways, the COVID has given us another fracturing because we have Brexit fracturing, and we've got you know because there are people yeah. that believe in democracy and can see the unelected power establishment and think you know it's futile. And if you look at their COVID response in the EU, it's it's so bad that I think Italy and Greece and God knows how many countries will be 
e-exiting or whatever the Frexit. I mean, we already know that if France had any kind of free speech, really, that that, that they would have listened to the protesters after 60 weeks of craziness. But nothing, nothing's emerged, has it? Um, yeah. Sorry. Well, I'm in the, at the end of the day, then, you know, sorry, but go back to the parliament thing. So we're like, yes, hooray, like we had, as, if we, as if we'd had this huge victory. And then nobody's even talking about it. So then I was like, okay, so what's next then? And it's like, oh, well, it goes to the EU. Well, yeah, good. So what use is the EU? What, what use is the... Um, I don't mean this like as a bad thing to Neil Smelzer, not at all, but what... what oh, I'm sorry, I'm just frustrated. What use is it, you know? It, obviously it has... It must have some... I'm, I'm feeling a bit frustrated about it all, you know? We're just jumping around the parliament to say, yeah, and then, oh, well. Well, I think we're all frustrated and um, I'm most yeah. disappointed in normal people. I mean, I um, before I came to work at home, I just work as an architect at home um, and do probably about 50-50 activism architecture and only because my husband kind of uh, can, can just about support us even if I wasn't working. And I'm in a privileged <laughs> position, so I do that. But one of the things I did a few years ago was I was a lecturer in, um, I was a lecturer in architecture and I'm also a signatory of the 9-11 Architects and Engineers for Truth. And one of the things that completely made me bash my head against the wall um, was when um, I think if Grig had got on the live stream, I don't know if Grig is here, but um, if Grig had got on the live stream, he would tell you all about it. He wrote to all the academics in New Zealand and my old colleagues at Victoria University and said, please, we need um, someone to do a study on... Um, 9-11, um, because engineers in Alaska have just proven that uh, Building 7 was a controlled demolition. Um, and um, none of them responded, not even slightly. Even people I know won't respond about Assange. They won't respond about anything that challenges them. And it made me question the whole academic scene that I was in, I started to think, well, what are these people doing if they're not commenting on free press, if they're not commenting on journalism and they're not commenting on you know, three buildings dropping down at free fall from fire, which has never happened. And the institutions won't even look at it. That is, for me, speaks such volumes. And it really, really pissed me off in terms of my previous academic career. And so much so that I have one paper that I managed to write during my academic career. And it's in Taylor and Francis. And I've recently found out that Taylor and Francis are fully responsible for blocking um, a British company blocked an, an American university from revealing that the 2017 chemical, chemical attack in Syria was fake. So the sim similar thing happened in April of the previous year to the OPCW that we all know about, which is the recent WikiLeaks release that shows that the chemical weapons watchdog in the UN is corrupted to the point of, you know, the whistleblowers. Thank God there are so many, so many people willing to come out, engineers, um, people on the ground, uh, everyone there <laughs> just said, no, this report is a fictitious system and that's what um, prompted Trump to bomb Syria so really if we can get through break through these ridiculous lies it would be a good start and I can understand why you can feel um, frustrated I certainly am with my friends academics journalists in New Zealand politicians I mean I've already been banned from my MP um, and it wasn't my MP that banned, banned me. It, he wants to meet with me. It's the gatekeeper at his desk <laughs> that won't let me through. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I understand so much. And, uh, Ilvia, I must say I love your work and thank you so much for what you've achieved. You know, you know many of us are just one person <laughs> or a very yeah. small group of people battling away in our local area and doing what we can. Yeah, it's. Uh, I thank you all as well, Unity for Jay, and uh, you as well, Alex. We've chatted before, and mm. Patrick. Um, yeah, and thanks for doing this. And just what you were talking about there, it's re reminded me of this gaslighting, actually. Yeah. What What you were talking about, and that's so. Yeah, uh, that is frustrating, and it, I mean, yeah, I'm frustrated. How must he feel now after a year in prison? It's disgusting what's going on. And, yeah. 
Isn't it interesting how yeah. we were all saying this is not about Julian Assange, this is all of our rights, you know, he was just in the way of them, as I think Ian yeah. maybe mentioned before. It is so true now for everyone who's suffering from a little bit of confinement in their own homes with everything they need around them, um, you know, and the ability to go out at least to get supermarket shopping if you're not a kid. Here in New Zealand, um, we're certainly walking around and getting exercise, but we have had neighbours reporting on each other, um, mm. calling sound control because people are having wine on their driveway and chatting to the person on the next driveway. You know, <laughs> it's like no one has houses that are two metres, sites that are two metres wide. So why can't we do that? And we're getting, you know, people happy to call and then report on each other. Um, mm. And I'm very frightened about this new world if this we, is the case. We had that, sorry, but we had that too as well. I was watching a live stream of Austrian TV and the woman was going around this street. It was like really hilarious for me. It's like so ironic. So oh, let's see who's on this. Oh, what are you doing on the street here? What are you? And then she, was, she, she actually described herself as police TV. As in, a, oh, really proud, you know. It's like, oh, yes, well, ring up if you're anybody on the street. You know, get, get the fuck off the street. Sorry, but I've been <laughs> going around. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, really, yeah. It's really worrying, you know. And I I am a bit, like, conspiratorial as well about it because I said this two weeks before it happened. They're going to lock us down. We're not going to be able to demo. That was the only thing I could think about. We're not going to be able to demonstrate anymore. Mm. And it really happened, and I, uh, yeah, but that's that's another I think, story. <laughs> I think we were up. We were, I was just boasting before people were starting to shut down. I actually was just about to boast fifty cities that I was listing that were doing regular events, and it was a hell of a of a package because it was some people were doing fortnightly, and some people were doing weekly, and some people were doing monthly, and some people were just whenever, and it was really quite hard to try and package that up in a way because I'm not technically minded enough to do a really great website um, and the German guys have done an amazing job on their website it is mostly German but you can click for some of the things to turn into English yeah. but it's a bit difficult and so there's not really the joined up because we're not a big organization with funding um, it's really difficult to join us all up and I guess unity for j was one of the reasons why I was very worried about going out for funding because of Susie's thoughts on that Joe what's um what's your feelings on funding these days because Susie was really really um worried about uh, hey, well, appearing um, like a one, grifter yeah yeah I mean we never really wanted to say hey we need well you know give us money because then you know what will we do once we got it but you sort of do need money to operate as um uh the guy from Perth was saying um, Mitchell, um, you know, you do need a few dollars here and there. And I had to call out in the Discord the other day, can someone uh, give me, I think it was $12, um, to renew the domain name? <laughs> um, you know, it's with this crazy. corona thing, um, we're, we're on the, well, limited incomes and I'm not working, so mm. whatever the government's willing to give us. Um, so it, it can be, it can be, but uh, certainly, um, what we HQ in the in the lobby. Hey, um, one um one thing I think uh, RSFO is here. Um, RSFO, if, um, you wanted to say a few things. Um, yeah. You're Why a regular just... on our YouTubes and have certainly been been around and talked to a few people. Yeah. Wanted, um, Can you unmute you, um... him, um, Joe? Hello. Ah, oh, hello. You hear me? I hear you. I don't you know. Can. I don't know what I, what I should add. I have been on board. Just tell uh, us a bit about project. your experiences and um and who you've seen and where you've been. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have been on the internet most of the time and been on both Unity for Today once it, uh, it spawned. Actually, it spawned out of um, Susie's uh, Decipher You streams because once they um, shut down Julian's internet, it morphed into Unity for Today and I was on board immediately. And um, yeah, I don't know what what should I add. I when I went to London more than a month ago, so I thought uh, someone should. Uh, I think they they needed as many people on the streets as possible for that. 
Um, yeah. So I went. Did you say that you met an Alex and you thought it was me in London? I mean, I am from London, um, but I wasn't. I haven't been there since May I, last year. I, I probably just conflated you. I met a lot of people. Yeah. I certainly met uh, Joe Loria from uh, yes. News <laughs> and Patrick Henningsen and Taylor Hudak and then quite a few more people. Patrick Batash from uh, German Cancer Society <laughs> because he is like fundamental. And I also want to give a big there's going to be loads of people i forget because they're not on this live stream but i did invite issy as well who's the other person in germany who's doing amazing amazing work um and the free assange um german group is is just going really really strongly so that's wonderful and um where are you from originally i'm from Copenhagen, denmark right okay i um, uh, i was once uh, the vice captain of the danish pirate party before we decided to dissolve it due to lack of, uh, um, well, activity. I guess Sadly. we're all suffering from algorithms. I mean, I do not believe that these things would have failed 10 years ago, which is why it's hard when you haven't got a platform, um, you know, to, to be able to do things on the level that Commander X is doing. And if you're not techie as well, then it's another level. As, again, you're just not sure of what you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, What's the Just position in were Holland? Not enough. Hmm? What's the position in the Netherlands at the moment? I know there's a couple of protesters there too. Yeah, I don't know much about it. <laughs> right. Um, people have contacted me trying to get protests off the ground in Amsterdam and the ha Den Haag, and um, I have tried to connect the people that I knew, um, but it's been pretty hard. Do you have ways of connecting people? Like, I would love if there were advocates for each country, and they were well adverse to to who the to the, who the activists were and where they were based, so that you could say, oh, you should. You should meet up with this person. Maybe you guys can do something together, especially in this age where we might be needing to look at constituencies and going to MPs on Zoom meetings, which means that we have to organise to the point of having only people working together that are in that constituency. And I mean, there will be peaks and places where there are a lot more supporters. And I think because New York's been doing it weekly for so long, they're doing really well. And Mexico was doing really well. Germany's obviously doing great. And London, I've been so proud of what I've seen at London. There's so many groups. Well, I would, uh, would have liked that I had the, the, the abilities that cat me my have, have, but um, I'm I don't know if I'm a very good activist, but I have been dragged on board. And then I have taken action when I, when people have uh, <laughs> said, now we are doing live streams, etc. So I'm not, mm. I'm not very good at in the streets, right. sadly. Yeah, <laughs> that's I, not my strength. I'm not very good at that either, and well, we've all got different strengths. So was, I think we need to connect yeah. with people who can work together and and do those things because everyone's got different skills. <sighs> Sure. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I'm primarily, I mean, I've got a family to look after and I primarily interact with the world through the internet. So I, I find it, it's great that there's people out in the streets. Um, but when, uh, when lockdown came along um, and we had to stay in our houses, it's um, certainly the, well, it works well for me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, there's a couple of, uh, couple of people in the, um, in the waiting room, maybe okay. Oha and yeah, well, Gamache, if you can flip them up I'm not sure if so either of them want to say hi. Yeah, I'm totally happy um, to people to say hi. I'm totally happy to share things. I was thinking I might share my speech are. as yeah. well. Um, I could share my two-minute um, speech that was on in, in Wellington Parliament. If everyone here he wants to hear my rant. <laughs> Um, oh, if anyone, awesome. like Midnight Poetry Band have gone now, but maybe I can, can share can I their make music. Sorry, uh, this is Paddock Radio uh, signing in. Can I just make a request uh, if you are going to have a chat? Oh, my God. Can you just introduce yourself where you are? Because we're actually live to okay. air right now. Um, I'm just going to go to someone there that I recognize is Timothy. <laughs> Unmute Timothy. <laughs> that is Timothy. Come here. Oh, my God. So this is my musical buddy who lives around the corner that I can't see. And I, I haven't felt right about arranging secret Hello. meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Timothy. It would be Hi. great if we could do some music Hi. live on Zoom. Hey, um, so going back to what Paddock uh, Radio was saying, we're live um, 
live on his uh, channel. Oh, if we sorry. all just do a good round and just say, um, just say where we're from, um, that would be awesome. Okay, <laughs> I'm, we could I'm do here a from round. Wellington, um, in New Zealand. Okay, yeah. um, so I am from New Zealand and hosting this with Joe Booth at the moment. We are ex Unity, well, Unity for J people, but also Free Assange New Zealand and Candles for Assange people. Um, Paddock is on at the moment, but maybe if we go around, Timothy, do you want to um, say hello and tell them who you are? Oh, hi. I'm Timothy. I'm in Wellington. <laughs> So you are my musical buddy and he is the mastermind behind all the lyrics and the music and I just really just riff along with yeah. it with my violin and then promote it. So we're a duo. Awesome musician. <laughs> Good gems. Good gems. Of music. We can yeah. share some of that stuff at the end if you want. <laughs> I'll leave it running. Um, so is there anything you want to say, Timothy? Oh, uh, actually, I'm just listening for the time being. Okay, I'll leave um, it. Good to see you all, Patrick and Joe. Nice to see you. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, then. If you're not talking now, I'll meet you. But if you want to just chat and, and let us know. Okay. Um, so, Joe, you were saying someone was – I thought that was who I was surprised with in the chat. But who who are we talking to? We've got Mitchell back again. Um, I don't know if we've got a better security. Are you, are you on? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say about um, maybe if you're like a bit hesitant to go out onto the streets, um, I definitely was. Um, I just started it by making a Facebook event and only three people came and uh, that was in November. And after that, I was pretty disheartened, like didn't do things for another probably two months. But when I did... Um, more people came and it was about six people the second time, just through Facebook and Twitter. Um, and eventually it just built up just pretty quickly and we had a rally and 40 people came. And that was just from Facebook and Twitter. And Was that yeah, candles just, in July? Because I saw a massive group of people in Perth and I put you guys in my video because it was such beautiful footage with the policemen coming down the mall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had um, to have that in there. <laughs> it was great. And also just with the – we're taking a table out and getting people to sign letters. And so at first we had one table and now we've got three tables. So we can actually do – and we've got like probably 12 people that have been involved with that. So you just need two people to stand behind a table, just someone there to talk to. And people just will come up to your table if you have a banner and they'll just sign the letters. And it's just keep it's just kept growing and growing, and I've just met all these people, and you just talk to people, and then they say they might come next week, and they might have a table or a banner that they bring. Uh, a lady called Nick um, just donated her banner to me. I'd never met her. She just came up to me and said, "You're the guy for Facebook. Yeah, have this banner." And so yeah, I, I'm like, have not you too have confident. you have you been able to um, convert that? effort and energy and those people that are available have you managed to find any way of kind of activating it in the last couple of weeks to do anything get some online stuff happening or um just planning online. for the future yeah i'm i'm not too sure about the online stuff i'm really hoping that this lockdown will be over especially in wa because it's um isolated from the rest of australia and new zealand as well like i think you guys pretty much got it under control for now. So I'm hoping that soon, like, you'll be open up. And I think we should just plan for a big event as soon as this is opened up because this trial is still going ahead. Um, yeah, so just plan the event now. Co contact everyone online. I mean, everyone's at home, so they're available to talk to, which is good. Yeah, You can, you can ring musicians, all the musicians that you might want to play at your events and stuff. They're, they're all looking for stuff to do. Right. So, so as soon as this is over, we need to get out there, and I'm, I'm going to talk to Amnesty and ask them to actually hold a rally because I think they are um, in support of us here in WA. Well, is this a, a local chapter of the Amnesty? Did you, did you say? Yeah, Am Amnesty West Australia. Right. Yeah, because I think the ones that I focused on were probably in the international ones. And what happened when I focused on Amnesty? Um, 
two things happened. Once was when I was outreach. Susie asked me to do some outreach and I wasn't really sure about what I was doing. And I was a bit like a bull in a china shop. But one of the first things that other supporters were trying to encourage me to do was contact Amnesty. And that's why I kind of got so involved, actually, um, in pissing them off. <laughs> but what happened was that I, I wrote an email to Amnesty Australia and their media person called back and uh, emailed straight back with this amazing bullet point list of their support for Julian. And there were a few disclaimers in there, but it was essentially a supportive statement, which considering that their website was um, showing a smear about Sweden from 2012 up until three days before our trial in May, in in February, sorry, um, it was it was just amazing, um, and so we got this response from this media person. It turned out to be a single person and their feelings on it, and they were, were knowledgeable, and so they instantly gave their feeling back, or some some kind of unofficial message came out of Amnesty, and luckily we got it published really quickly and um, WikiLeaks posted it to their timeline just before they managed to retract it and say oh this was just one person acting in an office giving her opinion and it's not what Amnesty think and so that was an interesting thing but it certainly ruffled their feathers and uh, they didn't act then and the reason we were on to them then was because Chelsea Manning was being banned and um, Amnesty Australia was doing quite a lot for Chelsea and so from New Zealand that was hosting her live streams because she couldn't go to Australia um, we started putting on the attack on Amnesty and so that was an interesting response and the other one was um, MEB and I were discussing a Shamnesty um, protest around about to, you know December I think it was and so we had literally just um, sorted out a, a um a logo that said Shamnesty and she was going to do London and I was going to try and get people to do offices or at least ring them everywhere. And before that protest even came about, they put out their positive statement and everyone was asked to shut up and put those memes away um, from what's going. Ah, yeah. hello, Paddy. Are you on? Hello. Maybe you should um, go full screen. I can't hear you. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm I'm actually muting through my desk, so uh, I'll, I'll just change my. Life. I couldn't resist the picture-in-picture picture opportunity. There, sorry. <laughs> it's an infinite fractal of supporters. See, there's so many of us. <laughs> um, okay, sorry. Where are I? Where was I? Where was I? I'm back here. Sorry, I distracted to, to you, you, Mitchell. There you go. Sorry oh. about that. It's a bit choppy. Yeah, we were, I guess, pretty annoyed at Amnesty as well. Um, just the lack of kind of action. But I think you've just got to put that behind you. Like now that they're on board, he's on the website. He was, he was on the front page of the Australian website for a few weeks. Um, yeah, I think you can really go to the, they have these groups called local action groups who are basically groups of activists, I guess. And if you look up your local action group, you can go to those meetings and actually just ask them to act on this just Make it about human rights, make it about health, um, freedom of speech. Don't need to go into other stuff that they might not be interested in, but they will support you, I think. Mm. Okay. Well, I would like to think that's true and it's not just about money and how many um, people they could get three days before the extradition trial with the minimum amount of actual effect it, that's what it certainly seemed like to me um but i i will give them um maybe maybe the international um secretariat has who is the person that makes the decision so effectively that's the ceo whoever's the top of amnesty decides what their campaigns are and that's that that was their complaint that they they would like to act but they can't because the international secretariat effectively is telling them what they can and cannot and for whatever reason three days before the trial that lifted that was lifted and i'd be very curious as to why that was lifted and when and then they probably had a heads up on your action and pending on chemistry oh, i'd love to think that. <laughs> that was the best uh, route yeah, yeah but... I, I don't think we were going to be a huge protest, uh, but I think we were having quite a draw online because it was going out with the candles and Emmy stuff and Julian Assange Defence Committee in London. So a lot of people were seeing it potentially. They told me that they looked at my previous Facebook and Twitter posts <laughs> before they 
wanted to talk and meet with me. So if you posted anything bad about them, they might not want to talk to you. <laughs> I think that I'd be already banned. I have a feeling I actually don't think they like me very much, personally. Um, I have the board member of Amnesty in New Zealand's number, and I was ringing her up in Myanmar and stuff, and I think she's had enough. Um, and I was polite, but I can be a bit bull in a China shop. I'm not the politest person because it, it just, you know, you do feel like you're smacking your head against the wall sometimes and you can't help but lash out. And I am I wish I could be Tulsi Gabbard and just, even though the topic that you're talking about is, is atrocious and disgusting and not that I'm approving of what she's done now, but actually, you know, the way that she is able to calmly that statesman-like protect. quality. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I wish I could channel that, but I am not that person. So I am better used in the sarcastic bitch slap <laughs> to pull in a China shop option. Um, not so good for being diplomatic, possibly. Hmm. Um, have you heard the – have you seen the video where Donald Trump says about WikiLeaks that he thinks – there should be the death penalty. Yeah, I have seen that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also yeah, I've seen the video where he said, we love Licky WikiLeaks. And I've seen Cassandra Rule's video, which is actually the most telling. And I would 100% recommend people. I actually made my first documentary video on my Alex Hills channel. And if you go down about five or so videos, Cassandra Fairbanks is probably the biggest video that I've managed to do yet. And um it, just listen to that call if you want a little glimpse of what's going on in the Trump administration, because I think Trump supporters do support Julian and they're in cognitive dissonance mode at the moment. They're going, oh, yes, Q, trust the plan. He's going to be pardoned. Oh, we just need to get him out of the evil British justice system. And once he's extradited, he'll be fine. But do you get the feeling he's going to be fine in America? Because <laughs> from that call, Cassandra Fairbanks, it just totally blows it out of the water. And I don't even understand how Q can carry on with their bullshit at this point, really, actually. Um, and, and I mean, you're, this is speaking from someone for the first week of Q, and I was onto it in October of, what was it, 2018 even? I was onto it then, and I I was sucked in. I thought, God, if this is real, this is fantastic. Wouldn't it be great if Trump really was cleaning up the deep state? Wouldn't that be lovely? Wouldn't it? <laughs> Um, but it, it was quite clear very, very quickly that that was not the case. Um, and I immediately just went, no. Um, and obviously, you know, you start to see other journalists calling it out. I, I sort of thought, yeah, no, this is stupid. This is obviously not real. And now I've come to the conclusion that it is just the antidote to the complete bias in the MSM against Trump. This is what you get when you do what you did in the MSM media. Um, because to be fair, and I don't like Trump, but he was actually um, spied upon. It, it, he was wiretapped. The Russiagate thing was a complete farce. We all know that. Everyone with the brain actually should know that, um, I think, probably. Maybe I'm being, as you know, assuming again. Well, the reason I brought up the death penalty thing is because the Australian government and the New Zealand government as well are both um, wholly against the death penalty. And they actually said that in Parliament because they were asked, what are you doing? Like Julian says he's afraid to go to uh, America because he'll get the death penalty. So what are you doing to oppose that? And she said, uh, our foreign minister said, we've had assurances that he won't get the death penalty. But then there's this video on YouTube. Um, I can post the link in the chat, and it's Trump saying, "I think he should get the death penalty." So what I've done now in my newest letters, I've screenshotted the video, I've posted the link to the video, and I've said, I've quoted him saying that he should get the death penalty. And that's what I think we really need to ask the politicians: if you call them or speak to them in person or in your letters, you've got to ask them. The President of the United States said he should get the death penalty and our government's opposed, so how can you not oppose this extradition? I think um, part of that Cassandra Rules thing was that the, a deal was made with Ecuador that, that the death penalty wouldn't apply, and I completely agree with you, it's quite clear. But, I mean, it's also quite clear that Trump will say anything to appease anyone at any time, and it can be different within one second to the next, you know, so it's difficult to know. 
um, how you can do, but, but your idea there of like combining um, maybe a snippet of that and then combine it with a video of the UK going, oh, yes, you know, we've totally ruled that we don't believe in the death penalty. And then, you know, combine it with a snippet of someone reading out factual details about the court case and what the baris, um, the judges said, you know, maybe maybe that kind of tying together a few really key clips in a two minute Twitter size video that really put the cognitive dissonance to rest, you know, by things like you're suggesting. Cool. Okay, I've got to go now. But okay, Mitch, well, we would love to hear more from you because, every, you know, every idea you've come up with so far has been totally gold um, and um, sort of making us think in a much more low-tech way. And I do love that you think that the protests are going to come back on, but I am actually very sceptical on how much our powers will come mm. back, and I don't think yeah. the group meetings are it. I don't think we've even had discussion in New Zealand and we've done very well here with the, the COVID, but we've had discussion about moving back to level three, whatever that means, which is one stage less than that. I think you can go and have a work meeting, but I don't think the protests will be allowed at that stage. Um, I think uh, Elizabeth wanted not. to ha Bye, have, a, have a word before she left as well. But so. Sorry, it's like uh, I've been up all night, 6 a.m. So I'm starting wow. to like fade and get really loopy. So I tried to write a few notes. Those were really great. I, I really appreciated though listening to everybody and um, thanks everyone for just speaking about it. I've, I've learned so much tonight. Um, so, Are you in your bathroom because you're trying to keep quiet for the house? Yes, I'm, I'm somebody else is sleeping in the room, but I come in here anyway because it's, it's lit up. <laughs> but um, I, I'll try not to do my live streaming in here. Um, but yeah, what, did I, what was I gonna say? Um, I just realized, you know, it, it is so important to do, going back to the idea of storybooking, um, what happened to Julian Assange, I think so, we are, I, it, it really um, spoke to me or reminded me how we are all so educated about this topic and we've been sort of working with these, um, with the story for so many years that we forget how do you break it down to somebody that has no idea who Julian Assange is or where do you even start? So. Um, I know that there are a couple flyers that are already circulating by Bean who put them out and they're excellent. But I, um, one thing I started doing is collecting um, all of the WikiLeaks documents that have Julian Assange listed in them and telling his story through leaks. Wow. And I want to, I wanted to present it today, but too much is going on. And so I'm set back, but anyway, Love well, why that. don't we make why don't we make a um, move now to have a May eighteenth one for New Zealand? Um, Patty, will you be going live on May eighteen by any chance? Are you free to talk? Oh, he's in the middle of something, so we can't. This talk time, to him. Uh, this um, time next week is the same, yeah, same time next week. We could do the same time next week. I mean, if people oh, want to... sorry, May, May. May, yeah. May 18th. A week and thinking. a month away. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I was thinking of a big one. If, if we could do something like we've done here, I mean, Sydney got attacked today, but now we know how that cannot happen. Um, can we I do we bigger are, ones of these? Available May 18th. Great. Uh, the static radio here. Great. Okay, are you live at the moment or are you just between tracks? Yeah, no, we're full live. We're taking you guys and all of your chats live as well. Oh, so right. we've been covering this whole thing for the last two hours. Oh, you're amazing. Uh, I've just been popping in and out because making sure that your vocals aren't going to feed back because your vocals are actually live at the moment as well. So uh, yeah. we've been covering absolutely everything that's been covered here I on the channel. Awesome. Uh, and Fantastic. Huge thank you to everybody who's joined us from around the world. Thank you, Patty. Uh, this is really quite amazing and totally unprecedented. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, Miss. All of the audio is going live on our YouTube channel. So that's youtube.com slash paddock radio. It's also live on our Twitch channel, twitch.com slash paddock radio. It's live on our Facebook feed, which is uh, facebook.com slash paddy paddock. And we're also live on our own um, audio only website, which is paddockradio.net. We play music 24 seven. That's all, uh, all original content that's been sent in from people around the world. We're totally no ads and, uh, no, not for profit. We're run underneath the Burning Man principles, actually. So uh, we connect to the Burning Man International um, Radio Network every Sunday, uh, 2 p.m. New Zealand time, which is 5 p.m. Uh, West Coast. And I think it's about 7 p.m. on the East Coast in uh, America there. We broadcast live around the world to all of the 
Burning Man satellite radio stations. Are you is. part of Kiwi Burn? Yeah, yes, but I'm not. <laughs> I, I had this fight with them because they said, oh, you could be the official radio station for Kiwi Burn. I said, well, I have to really stress that Paddock Radio is 100% independent. We do whatever we want, and uh, we will not be told we're the fourth estate. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to just broadcast whatever I want. I built it. I'm Wicked. It, it's mine. Paddy, can I introduce you to my mate Timothy, who's my musical buddy? If he's going to talk again, I don't know. Are you in a car? Um, are you in a car, Timothy? Yeah. <laughs> like a limo. I reckon he's in a limo. <laughs> this is why he's my best friend. See? <laughs> it's amazing to have so many people from around the world as well. Um, big shout outs to the people from Perth. And Elizabeth, whereabouts are you based at the moment? You're in America, right? Yes, I'm in Princeton, New Jersey. I'm right outside of New York City. And we're totally on, well, not complete lockdown in California, but it's pretty bad. We can only go to the store during a curfew and get food at certain times. Uh -huh. so, here, here in New Zealand, we've been on lockdown for the last 14 days, I believe. And, uh, really? Yeah, Completely locked down? completely locked down or just lockdown. we've been on full lockdown for yeah 14 days so far it went to level three lockdown for uh two for 48 hours just so that we could get enough to you know uh, get in but the government's been saying that we're going to be on lockdown for another possibly four weeks um but really from our, from my point of view i really think that it's been it seems to be really quite effective at the moment I, um where I am on Waiheke Island, we're broadcasting from a little island off the coast of Auckland City. Um, Auckland's completely closed. Like, the, the, the motorways are dead. Nobody's going anywhere. And it, a lot of the infection rates actually really stabilized. So it's interesting. And I, I, really, I really strongly um, support this sort of initiative that's happening right now where we are moving to a more global connected sort of uh, medium. And it's something that I've never really seen take off so well before, except for now that you've got everybody locked in their house. So people, are, you've got a captive audience here. It's great. So it has been know, the catalyst but, for this kind of thing. Yeah. I was eyeing it up thinking, oh, this lockdown's coming. This is going to be fantastic for internet based enterprise and, and collaborative stuff over the internet. Um, so, you know, when people started saying, oh, Zoom's the new thing, I'm like, yeah, well, it has been for quite some time for this kind of thing. Huh? Right? Yeah, well, somebody's, there's been a chat uh, message in the chat box here mentioning Jitsi. Uh, Jitsi is an open source um, free version of Zoom. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's actually come encrypted end to end, so J I T S I dot org, um, and they you can do pretty much start one straight away. We tried the other night, but th this is really uh, it's it's a really easy way to do it if you've got a Zoom account. Um, yeah, I think Susie, we're only um, doing this because of Susie Dawson, actually. So we should put out a big thank you to Susie Dawson right now, who's Susie. allowed us to use her special account that allows it to live stream to Unity for J. Yeah, otherwise I don't think you can do more than five users at once. But uh, No yeah, more than 40 time, minutes. Time limited and bits and pieces, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, certainly um, I've participated in a few of the um, oh, pirate party, pirate beers they've been doing over um, Jitsi, and, and we've seen it sort of can handle sort of 15 odd people before it starts to fall apart. Mm -hmm. um, so for the bigger meetings, um, you, you sort of do need um, a fairly decent sized server have to um, just say, oh, um, Zoom, can we use some of your servers? <laughs> um, right. Certainly, if you're looking for something that's um, secure and, well, you're not streaming it live to the internet in 16 different formats, um, then uh, certainly um, securing your stuff and either running Zoom on-premise or um, Jitsi um, on your own server or, or something like that is probably recommended if you're trying to stay secret. And also just a question for everybody, all the attendees in the meeting, like, how's my audio sounding? Is Are you guys hearing yourself? Um, yeah, no worries. Yeah. Too bad. Sounding good? Yep. Oh, that's, I need a that's microphone good. like that. Oh, awesome. I mean, it might not be great if you were doing music. Um, it's okay for, it's Zoom is okay for voices. What, what's the other one, Jitsi? What's that like for um, music? And also, oh, is it the sort of thing that if someone has no skills, it's going to open up anyway kind of thing? Because like, some people are okay because you can just click a Zoom link and it seems to just open for them, but it, yeah, some people are not comfortable. I believe what it looks like. Alex. 
in the last couple of days, and it's relatively easy to start up. Um, when you go to meet.jit.c, <laughs> it just comes up, start a new meeting, you hit the go button, and then you just you can share that link with people. Now, as, as for moderating, I've never moderated a live Zoom call, so I'm not sure what it looks on your end if you're the... Oh, the this is my first time, and Oni can do it because Joe has completely helped me all along. Um, I've got someone from Belmash HQ asking to be unmuted, maybe? Is, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up, but just letting you guys know as well. Um, yeah, we are broadcasting this cool live air on all of my. Uh, okay, no worries. Thank you. Yeah, awesome, it Patty. looks a little bit Thank complex, and there's right. lots of screens across the place. But um, certainly, uh, moderating. Is <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Alex, can I just butt in for a minute? Um, yeah. I'm gonna have to go soon, but the question that I'm itching to get an answer for, if anybody knows. Does anyone know why Julian was not well enough to share, you know, via video with his last hearing? Any news on that? And then I'll let my <coughs> HQ talk. Uh, I don't know if I can answer that one. Um, the one, the person that has done the interview that I can most rely on and uh, direct you to is the consulting news one by Deeper Driver. Now she's really open on Twitter. She's organizing the Free the Truth conference today though. So she'll probably be insane. Um, however, it might be worth, it would be great to have some clarification because she's the one that overheard it. And so all she heard was a rumor and no, and as far as I know, we don't have any other information. Yeah. yeah. We need to know, don't we? And when I say she heard a rumor, sorry, she overheard the court people talking about it. So it's more than a rumor, but it's not something that is being reported by other journalists in there. It's just something that she overheard. Okay. And so she went on video to, to explain about that. But I think we're going to have to have some other people unpick it because at the moment, no one's allowed to visit um, Julian. And I was hoping to get um, Vivian Westwood's son on to talk because he was one of the last people to, to see. It. And I think that he will be speaking at Action for Assange. Okay. I think he wanted a bit of a bigger audience than New Zealand potentially. <laughs> We've done quite well, I'm pretty sure. But um, yeah. Oh, well, then, Bella, is it Belmarsh HQ? Yeah. Um, so yeah. I've got hand waving, but I don't know what to do about it. And um, I can't hear them. Belmarsh you HQ. Can't hear me. Ah, Can you hear me? Is that you, Dave? It's me. Oh, you're not sharing yeah, the video was... today. No, I don't know. I'm pressing. It's gone red. Oh, you have video. to click. Yeah. Um, I you can't cannot stop, stop video. video because the host, host has disabled it. Oh, Joe, can you undisable Bill Marsh HQ? We can trust him. I don't think you're going to spam him as, as with porn, are you, Dave? Well, I don't know. Hopefully. I ain't got a top on. Have you seen what happened to Sydney overnight? I don't know if you saw the Sydney on, one. So... Uh... That's all right. We can handle it. <laughs> so, Dave, did you see what happened to Sydney tonight? Uh, so, so you're, during your night, um, you've woken up in the morning, but you probably haven't seen it. But Sydney, we were on a talk today, um, and it was going great. Lisa Johnson from um, Doc Dr. Assange had just started talking. I was downstairs because I was told I was going to be last. So I was pottering downstairs and not even looking at this and when I came back up I found porn all over the screen <laughs> it's like what, what? The hell is going on? and so basically the Sydney protests was completely spammed to the point where they had no control and they had to just shut down and restart with a private meeting oh, Christ. Invite, invite what was all that about Who's done know, that? It's pretty shocking. Uh, it's, well, it's obviously not just normal people. We, you know, everyone no. goes, oh, who are these crazy people that haven't got anything else better to do with time? The way it worked was they held back until something, they build up a good amount of users and people listening. And someone really great who you don't want to discredit with things like that, especially Lisa, mm. you know, a doctor, <laughs> talking yeah. about someone who's been accused of being a rapist, you know, who's a feminist, who can speak out to these matters and not, you know, make yeah. people angry. Yeah, it was a bit shocking. So anyway, Dave, would you like to have a, a, a yarn to the world unless someone else is itching to go? Well, I'm just going to say, be prepared for 3 p.m. at Belmarsh Live, okay? Oh, 3 p.m. today? Yeah, 3 so p.m. today. That's 3 a.m. for us Kiwis, but for anyone yeah. in America, well, Elizabeth, you've got to go for a sleep first, surely. But, um... <laughs> no, but... I don't want to interrupt. I... We're going to break curfew. We are right. going to break curfew. 
Okay. But please For be Julia. safe. Dave, we'll be safe. Make sure um, you're safe and keep solo and obey the rules. You know, well, if you're doing you nothing worse than a supermarket. I'm a journalist. I'm a journalist. Oh, so I'm working. So I'm working. Yeah. Mm. So I'm I'm actually working. So they can't do nothing. Yeah. Mm. We'll maintain our social distance. Have you got a There's press that. card then that you can you can find about? Uh, yeah, Julian's one. It's in my pocket. <laughs> it's still active. <laughs> Yeah, his uh, his press card runs out in June, twenty one. So that's cool. Okay, cool. <laughs> I've got his press number as well. So I I, I just work for, I work for Julian. So so I'm, uh, people who I'm don't know, David is literally within the shadow of Belmarsh Prison in London at the moment. Um, David has run a whole bunch of I was campaigns working, online I'll, and since the media. Yeah, the okay, thing good. is, the thing is, you Unity for J knows me. Cool. I've been with them since day one. Mm. So I've been working with them. Oh, but don't forget, this is not Unity for j This is um, oh, Candace for Assange yeah. with yeah, Joe. Yeah, yeah. This is a combined effort. We're all working together. Whole, yeah, so you should know me anyway. That's what I'm saying. You should know me. Well, not everyone yeah. here is from Unity for j either. That's what I'm saying. So you they won't know still you. Know so you me. tell them about you and what you're doing. Okay, well, I'm about five minutes away from prison. Um, been following Julian for well over a decade. Um, I've been really researching, haven't I, Alex? Can you hear me all right? I, no, I just unmuted. I've been researching. Have. <laughs> I have, haven't I? Yes. What a lovely document we found the other day. Did yeah. you tell everybody about that document? No, you tell them. <laughs> Someone's put in a civil legal action in the US to take down every single corporation you can think of that exists right now. And they put it through on the 20th of February. I'll send, I'll send you the, uh, I didn't send you it, did I? You told me about it. You Sorry, yeah, asked, I'll, I'll meet yeah, yeah, sorry I asked me. You I'll told me about it. Yeah. But I'm like, wow. So do you think this case has much hope? I mean, won't they throw it out like everything else? It'll have to go to Supreme Court or some stupid thing, right? Have we lost Belmarsh HQ? Uh, his audio seems to have got... His audio has gone. Okay, well, hopefully we'll get him back in a minute. So Fiona, um, were, you, were you just signing off? Sorry, and you're still here. I'm going to unmute you. Um, yes, I was just <clears throat> putting something in chat to say goodbye. Thank you, everybody. It's been very informative. I've taken notes of where you all come from and getting a handle on what you're all doing and keep up the good work and we'll win this fight. It's a war on truth and it's raging. We have to win. Um, what I what I heard the other day is someone was talking about, I think it was Second Earth channel or something, but because um, I've been trying to get Second Earth and some big channels that are on a completely different buzz i've been trying to get them involved whenever they talk about something that seems to be related and i think i've got the second earth guy and he's got tens of thousands of at least um followers and so i put it out there um to him on on, on his channel because i thought maybe he might be someone that would um forward it through but one of the things he said because his interest is in ancient history and stuff was that um you know history being subverted by bullshit um was that we've literally gone through several civilizations that have risen and fall thousands of years to get to a point where people have the amount of voice that we have right now and we are just literally about to throw it away like literally just uh -huh. Mm -hmm. toss it out the door and the uk justice system is making a fool of itself it's actually not just gaslighting people because anyone who's intelligent enough to look at it is so appalled that no one can take anything seriously that comes out of the uk anymore i'm appalled i don't even i want to burn my passports i don't know about you but i i have got three i feel like burning two of them at least if not all three because we can't travel anyway what's the point <laughs> You might have to if you <clears throat> if you don't want the coronavirus microchip implanted you with it. With yeah, well, I was hoping to get there for May because my dad turned ninety in March, and I was oh. trying to get myself my head around the, the amount of money to get over there, and I just didn't quite manage to get it together. And I haven't really felt great about fundraising, and so haven't got there yet. Oh, <laughs> so, 
Okay, I well, was um, going to go see my dad and oh, I can't do that now. And if that is what is the result of this new world is that we literally can't travel without having Bill Gates' vaccine because I've had all my vaccines, but I'm not touching that one. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> so, and my kids have had all of theirs, but I'm not having Amy having the HPV one because it's about no. Big Pharma. If there's any vaccines about Big Pharma, I'm not interested in 9 billion people, 6 billion people having them done forcibly. Yeah. And yet online you see people cheering for this right now cheering well, for this reduce reduce right yeah. it's crazy well, the video i watched on it said it's a brand new type of vaccine that actually uses dna and rna that combines with your dna and changes your dna so it's a, a brand new type of vaccine that sounds like a Frankenstein one to me. <laughs> it sounds like something that they could upload new DNA, you know, RNA to or some stupid thing, you know, like it feels like that kind of dystopian future that we just don't know about technology. And I don't want to get too conspiracy theory, but I have no doubt that this is being used right now. And we could so much make it work the other way because it has exposed globalism. It's exposed um, neoliberalism. It's exposed EU for being a farce and unelected power establishments that don't care about the other countries they're not really acting as one therefore all they've done is made the small countries powerless you know i think it's all being exposed so yeah. badly at the moment it might even have been why they shut it down because it was the perfect yeah. situation exactly yeah our time will tell but keep on fighting everyone mm. Stand for the within truth. the rules as much as possible i will be breaking the rules in two years time i promise yeah. you in 18 months time i will be breaking the rules fully but right now we do yeah. it within the rules and even if they're a little bit on the grey area. I'm pretty cool with that. Yeah. And the cool. coronavirus is going around Belmarsh Prison. Yeah, two people have already got it, apparently. Has anybody died there? One. Oh. Yeah, and what's interesting is Julian was in solitary, and that's the only report we got. We heard about him being moved to a more public wing in that he could at least spend his one hour he gets out of his cell a day with other people, and that was the desire. Now, it's not the desire, and we hear reports that he is now in a crowded yard because there's no staff, and the prison is, is, is almost dysfunctional at this point. Wow. So really feeling safe about Julian Assange being in there. And if, if Epstein was killed um, <laughs> in prison in America without COVID, and here we have COVID coming in, um, you know, the, the, it, it would, I wouldn't put it past them to, to, poison, to, to inject COVID into him. I, I honestly wouldn't. I... Well, lots of prayers. I, I'm going to go now, so I'll say goodbye thank to you. Thank you, Fiona, and thank you for everything you do. You're amazing. Thank you. You're amazing. Keep it up. <laughs> bye everybody yeah. any words of wisdom from you Timothy I always say goodbye to Fiona yeah. uh, catch you later Fiona no, no words of wisdom from me it's a shame we can't do a jam across the zoom that would be so great or maybe we could do a driveway jam one day live Yeah. Like social distance a, a physical distancing um, jam let's everyone start using the term physical distancing not social distancing let's get away mm -hmm. from this moving apart from our social people and now let's talk about moving apart from physical only so anyone else want to come in or do, does anyone want me to play any videos or um anything in particular that they'd like to actually say? what's happening so what what what's actually happening with uh with, with julian assange and his court case like um do they have they got his court case then booked for a time during this lockdown period yeah when the they've totally ignored the lockdown they're going ahead with the case. Um, they've ignored all appeals to... Um, How many other cases are going, uh, are going ahead during the lockdown? Maybe we should research in that. Um, Free the yeah. Truth, do you want to be unmuted? I'll unmute you, Free the Truth. You, you butt in if you want. Yeah, sure. Hey, um, one thing that um, has concerned me, you know, is with the um, trial, and it's a legal thing. And um, when Julian was... Um, out of the embassy and then he was put, um, then he was presented in front of the judge. And um, she called him an artist, but also she said that um, um, he, he, they wouldn't give him bail because he was a flight risk and he might abscond, you know, and because of his prior record. But he, did, he never skipped bail 
and he never absconded. He went into the um, into asylum as was his legal right as a political refugee. So I'm surprised that the lawyers haven't come onto that that first bit. That what the hell is he doing, even asking for that? But they no, gave I mean, a quasi answer in response. And Joe, you put this the best way um, because I think you're onto the the terminology better, Joe. But didn't you? How did you describe it? That they left it. That basically because I, I his case isn't the... a real case, they are essentially yeah. saying because his case is not real and because there's no reason why we have him in there. There's no reason. We why don't we have a reason to either. hold him, so we can't legally. Um, get rid of them either because Please we can't them. yeah yeah do you even hear this along those lines. this yeah. is not rationality this is not justice this is not any normal sane person do you think these lawyers don't have a clue how crazy batshit crazy this sounds do you really think they haven't got a clue because i i i know that they know what they're doing and they don't give a shit our only hope i think is to move away from the cia and weapons uh, military complex judges and get up to the next rung um, because those judges have way more to lose if um, their findings um, don't work out. You know, they, if, with the people, they, they have got public profiles. They have heard other courts. They put every other decision they've ever made into jeopardy if they make such a shit decision. So, I mean, my hope would be for the Supreme Court. But, um, Joe, I don't know if you know, um, Kim.com's case here for extradition to the USA is not going very well. He's got all the money in the world and cannot fight it himself can he joe yeah well that's um that's the that's the problem really um it's when the legal system doesn't doesn't follow the rules um when there's a judge who just ignores yeah ignores the reality and just says well this is the way it is no you can't do that because i won't allow it um but not actually give you any legal recourse and when you go to um try and get legal recourse um you get told no no you can't do that because this is an extradition um trial not a not a civil trial or so you know so there's always some legal technicality where they can say you, you can't do this and i think um john kiriaku said you know the the system's rigged um you know you're, you're not going to get justice it's about survival um and you know so essentially that's that's all it is um, it's I mean, not about it's, justice because you can't get justice. You can't legally say, I want this and this is going to happen. I mean, because we all know he shouldn't be in prison. There's no charge. What is he doing? Um, so, so How do we it's, unravel it's, you know, that? It's a, matter of, um, you know, it's a matter of survival and, and certainly the legal experts are working hard to try and find their way through that and they keep on trying different things and they keep on getting shut down. But yeah, that's the way. Um, I mean, are we worried that the lawyers aren't doing their job? Because we do know that we've got 12 lawyers on this and they're all commenting to each other and they're in parts of communities. I mean, there is a bit of a southern community and a northern hemisphere community of the lawyers, but we certainly have a lot of clever people on this. Um, unless the funding has got to the point where we're not able to fund the right amount for the lawyers that we need to get the right job but you'd think that these people could easily ravel apart these these ridiculous quasi arguments um well, they yeah, can use the um, small print but why yeah. aren't we able if you if you followed some of the arguments where they have you know put a straightforward uh, seemingly slam dunk argument in front of the judge and the judge has just essentially sidestepped and said oh no that's not relevant then um and you left with you know a legal team that spent days and days preparing a, a legal argument that's just been sidestepped and there's no easy way around that um, mm. because as soon as the judge who is the be all and end all says that um, this argument doesn't fly here they're left with well what do we do next um, and that's, so that's the, the supreme court fighting. wasn't positive in new zealand for kim.com right um, and we were ha we had all these hopes that they would be held to a higher standard because they are the Supreme Court and we would get people that were really worried about their careers there. But I mean, I guess people can just bunk their careers because it doesn't matter. It's that important that he goes down, sod your jural, you know, your, your legal career. It doesn't matter. So probably that, I mean, I can only imagine these people are bribed to not do you know what what's... the establishment's going to look after its own. Um, yeah. And, you know, you'll never see, you, you don't see justice on the other hand, you know, well, just look at all the things that WikiLeaks have um, revealed about, um, and Julian Assange has revealed about these crooked, you know, despicable acts that have been done. And, and, and well, 
where are the war crimes trials? Where are the where are yeah. the you know, where are the suits? They just haven't happened. They've just been ignored and swept under the carpet. So you know there, there is not there is not justice being done here. Um, it's 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 a survival thing, um, and and that's why we need to get Julian out. That's why we need to evacuate Julian because it won't be a legal process that gets him in the end. It will be the conniving, you know, torturous path of either justice or or someone doing something to him. I think probably the idea of a counter action. So, you know, take them to court for something. And one of the things that dawned on me is that this is now attempted murder without a doubt. I mean, we can, we can point to a hundred hundred scenarios which show that the collective establishment is trying to murder him. Um, is there not a, an ability there? And I spoke to Craig Tuck, Craig Tuck about this and he sounded quite excited about that idea. And I was really hoping that he'd come on tonight, but he said he's having a little bit of a family issue, so he's not, but he mm. does want to do another Zoom meeting. So if we perhaps do these more regularly or if we make it a Jitsi meeting or whatever it is next yeah. time, perhaps we we'll get some other um, people Yeah, on. certainly. Um, yeah, certainly it does turn into a, a point of sort of human rights or um, of, you know, of, of that sort of thing. I mean, we've seen um, where um, Mills Meltzer the, um, has just been completely ignored, the UN Rapporteur for, on Torture. Um, he's put very strongly worded things to states, and it's his job to do that. And what's happened? They've just been ignored or been told that, you know, he has no jurisdiction or, yeah. or whatever it is. Um, so these things that you see are, you know, you see it as a slam dunk, the golden bullet, it's going to crack the case right open. And um, and it, it's met with resounding silence. Yeah. And I think, like you were saying... It was meant to not be political, um, wasn't it? You know, when you start... And then suddenly you, we find out it doesn't matter whether it's political or not. You know, we, we, yeah. we heard about the... Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I have just received the words from Nikki Hager on my Gmail. Um, does anyone oh, yeah. want me to read them out? <laughs> so, Most definitely. Nikki has been very much supporting Free Assange New Zealand behind the scenes and um, probably most of you have seen his work or at least part of his work which is the 1,300 journalists um, all signing and professional journalists that have airtime and work for organisations have signed um, um, a statement and this list includes Daniel Ellsberg, John Pilger, um, you know just the top names in, in, in journalism and and so many impressive names and um, he's part of the reason that, that that went ahead. Hi Alex here are some words I'm happy for you to read them out. I send these words to add my voice to the people around the world supporting Julian Assange in his time of great danger. Julian is in the news at the moment because of the ongoing abuses of his human rights. But I want to acknowledge him as history will remember him. One of the genuinely important people of our era. He has had a major impact on world politics, politics since he dreamed up the idea of WikiLeaks 14 years ago. Through force of personality, intelligence and hard work, he made WikiLeaks into something that could change the world. He's a great innovator who tried to answer the question of how publics around the world could be informed about the actions of the powerful in an era of increasing secrecy. The great whistleblowers of our times are, I believe, in part following his footsteps. At the moment, he is facing punishment precisely because of some of his most important achievements. The huge leaks on the Afghan and Iraqi wars, the State Department cables, Powerful forces are at work against him. He badly needs people to stick up for him. Part of the retaliation against him has been blackening his name, but Mandela was once denigrated as a terrorist. Daniel Ellsberg of the Pentagon Papers had his personal life attacked, but history remembers them well. And I believe the same will be the case with Julian. I look forward to the day when he is a much respected elder invited to speak at a human rights conference. But for now, he is under attack and he needs and greatly deserves our support. Nikki Hager, investigative journalist, New Zealand. So that just came through not very long ago. But um, anyway, that's Nikki's words. And I believe that he is hoping to work on an op-ed about um, Julian. Um, and, you know, he donated all the candles for our um, candles for Assange last year. Um, which was great because the first year we did it, we tried to do it with real candles in plastic cups and 
you know, with the wind in Wellington, that was pretty futile, but we did manage to light them for long enough to, to get it going. And then the wind died down. So that was good. But um, Nikki Hager this year donated a um, pretty, you know, good portion of the um, LED candles that we put out on the lawn of the um, US Embassy in Wellington. Um, and we spelled, we spelled out candles for Assange there. Um, so that was great to get that message in time before we potentially leave this live stream. Um, is anyone else keen to talk or chat? Or is everyone done? Even Joe is done. Look at that. What about you, Timothy? It seems so oh. weird. You're just around the corner and here I am talking <clears throat> to you on Zoom. <laughs> I know, isn't it funny? Should we try um, and jam just for fun? <laughs> uh, nah, not a listy. Uh, um, yeah, but we should do it another day. Yeah. Okay. Day. I'll come and I'm calling it May today. 18. Unless we can actually do it on the ground, then I think it's going to be May 18, a virtual, another virtual, but a big one. I think we should do one in every city. All right. Well, here yeah, I'm going to go. I'll catch you later. I've got All work. Right, my dear. Thank All you. Right, later. Welcome. Patrick. Bye. Bye, bye, Timothy. Patrick, would you like to end? I think you can officially end our live stream because Joe Booth's gone offline. Maybe he had to go to bed. <laughs> I am still here. I'm just. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, so I, I hope we can have a, a live stream like this um, very soon again. Um, <laughs> faced, more topic faced. What, what can we do? What sh should we? Should we change? Because I don't know if you know, here in Germany I have uh, super heavy problems to keep the group in once, you know, it's falling apart. Yes, People, this is the problem everywhere. Everyone is having everywhere. this and there's two protests in every city. Um, and often I think it's people whispering in one ear and whispering in another ear and getting people to argue who are both genuine supporters quite often arguing with each other. But I think that there's whispering going on that causes them to do that. And I've seen it so many times. It's either people like um, taking over the platform or um, trying to commandeer it for their own cause or a political party or whatever. Usually it's something to do with their own desires or problems that causes that, in my opinion. At this moment, I have, I have, no, uh, I have no possibility to change the website. You know, I, I can't, you know, um, I had a guy who who is running this website for me. And he got sick, of, didn't he? Sorry? He got sick, didn't he? Yeah, he's a little bit sick, but now he got involved so much in all the problems here in Germany. So I received an email and I don't know how to handle this um, because I can't work probably. So you're uh, finding it difficult to work because people yes, because are spreading it, disinformation. Oh, 80% of my energy I have to spend on what's going on in the group and all these arguing and problems. And normally I can have 100% uh, working on Mr. Assange and mm. not only 20. Well, mm. maybe your problem is trying to control it too much and be in charge too much. No, it's, um, not, it's not about control or in charge. I, um, but I mean, I'm just let them be there organic, do what they want. I'm very less a fan. They can do what they want. But mm. if it's about that uh, people I don't know have teams which make decisions about money for donation money and telling me this, I, I don't know. I have to well, I don't know people. anyone getting donation money for Candles for Assange. If they are doing it under yeah, our name, exactly. I'm not getting any. Exactly. So why should they? <laughs> exactly, but they, they, was, they, they were planning um, to uh, uh, collect money in the name of Candles for Assange. And well, I got noticed of this and said, oh, wow, why uh, are you collecting money in the name of Candles for Assange? Who are you? And it's and there are a lot of a lot of small and bigger problems. Well, it's I mean, I don't have a trouble with that if they call themselves free, you know, Candles for Assange Germany or Candles for Assange Hamburg. What I have a problem is that I've been trying very hard not to look like a grifter. And if people go around fundraising, in, you know, scrupulously everywhere on the basis of the name, then that's that sort of 
worked. Exactly. You know, my decision to not fundraise is not working, is it? But I think you can just let go of those people and let them run their things and just check it. I mean, I've just really been taking a role of listing protests and not getting involved and trying. I do end up being an agony aunt sometimes, but I think trying not to get involved in, in the arguments and trying to talk to both sides, both sides. Um, is the best option and don't worry about them fundraising if they're doing it under candles for Assange I will talk to them you can talk to them if they're doing it under candles for Assange Frankfurt then let them I, I think um, Larice did that um, for candles for Assange in Canberra to try and get the candles on the parliament lawn which they did and at first I was a little bit skeptical about that and I didn't really want that because I had gone with the Unity 4J way of doing it and not, not going into funding. But um, they they did it anyway. So um, they got the money that they needed. And I kind of felt like, God, I should do this too. So, Patrick, maybe we should just properly fundraise big style for Candles for Assange. And therefore, we can just say those groups are doing their own actions and it's Candles for Assange Germany or Candles for Assange Frankfurt or whatever it is that you want to Everybody, it. But I think the, the key is to have a light touch. Everybody uh, is free to do um, what, what they want. No Even problem. if they call themselves but Candles for Assange? Some, there are some red lines and there are some borders. Yeah. Don't yeah. change the logo. Don't use the name for things which are not in the purpose. Right. Yeah, no, that's fair. And we have a lot of people here in Europe, especially in Germany. And, you know, by yourself, uh, as much people you have, as much people you, you have in this group who are not, um, who are not okay, who are maybe try to do their own stuff or mm -hmm. use your name for some other purposes. But it's, or look. It's not, I don't think we should, something we should take ownership of. I think we should just try and guide and say, hey, let's do a protest on this date. If we want to fundraise, let's take initiative to do that, but don't get angry at other people doing it. I think go with it and just have a light touch and don't, don't, because the problem with all these groups is that it comes down to egos. It comes down to ego against ego. And I think the thing is, is just to enjoy the success of listing these things and take a sort of, little bit of a back seat in terms of not trying to control them not trying to say what they can and cannot do and if yes if they use your logo and they use it for incorrect different thing then say of course pull them up on it if they fund and call themselves candles for sun and not specifically like candles for sun chicago there's a group there's a you know there's many groups around the world and if they're fundraising i don't give a shit actually whatever needs to happen in order for them to do their thing i think the key is to have a light touch if we're doing what we're doing which is basically listing and instigating as many protests as we can now this is a different story and solo vigils are another another story again if we're going to do online vigils this might be the new format maybe we just do these and we try and encourage everyone to do their own city one we try and get smaller in that we go to a smaller group of people and go live with only Kiwis and only people from Sydney. You know, maybe we need to start localizing our internet groups is I guess what I'm saying. But I don't think it helps to worry about this group doesn't like that group. This group has got left wing politicians. This one's got right wing. Oh, I think that this matter. is just bullshit. This is just bullshit it's to even matter. get wasting it's time. About, it's just about, um, if it's, there must be the possibility to work effectively. Yeah, that would be great. But you've got a website that's different to my website, and that's why I've been always trying to keen to try and make them talk to each other. So what probably the answer here is that we um, make Candles for Assange DE and Candles for Assange .com the same website, and then we can control that. If someone else is controlling Candles for Assange DE and they're not doing it in the spirit of what it was meant to be, then I don't give them permission anymore to use it and neither should you, Patrick. So we can both say that. And I think that's all right. What do you think, Ilvi? Do you have any um, feelings on this topic of, of groups that are um, fighting and having troubles like this? Have you had any experience like that in Vienna? Well, I did really, um, or not really, I don't know. It's like we came together here uh, over a Facebook group and uh, I did the graphics 
wait now, hang on a second. My husband is sh- <laughs> giving out. <laughs> okay. I just closed the door. So I, I just say, sorry. That's all right. And so just um, point out that Ilvi is from, Yvonne is from um, Vienna and has done a really great job. Patrick, do you know Ilvi? Oh, he's gone. Okay. We yeah. spoke. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm here. Oh, you're here. Sorry. He's just muted uh-huh. himself temporarily. Um, I'm just no. asking Patrick maybe. if you guys know each other because you guys must because it's more European based, right? Maybe maybe I know um, you under another name. Also, ich, ich, wahrscheinlich well, kenne ich dich unter äh, um, Holzmeier Cox. Oder? Genau, genau. Ja, yeah, wir haben gesprochen. Nein, das ist ein bisschen scheiße. Ich, ich, nein, ein Deutscher. So, ich habe friends? drei Wort verstanden. <lacht> we, are friends on, we are friends on Facebook. Facebook, But actually, exactly, we have never yeah. met. Yeah, exactly. I've got two names. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, well, not really, but I mean, you have to kind of, we had to kind of fight to get, to get together kind of thing because there's like all these different personalities. And I was started off doing the graphics. And so these people were quite, the people that, these people, the people that, that the, the group, that we started together, they are very professional and they were like, oh, we need this and this. So I was getting quite annoyed and stuff. <laughs> and um, it, 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 I, I, it made me um, about my own ego. Uh, it made me question my own ego actually. And it's it sometimes, well, why am I doing this? And it, am I doing this now for me or am I doing this for the cause, you know? Uh, so it, I found it actually quite an uh, awakening experience in that respect. And um, I had to like kind of, well, yeah, bow down to the, not bow down to these people. It sounds a bit weird, but you know, this, I didn't even meet them. I hadn't even met them. And they were on the phone going, yeah, do this, do this. And, and I had to really, yeah, think about it and, 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 and do what they said, basically, you know. And I, I think, like, of course, people are going to fight and stuff. That, that's going to be. But I try to, um, yeah. Having you to, tell them they can go and make their own graphics? That's what probably I would tell them, <laughs> to take their graphics and stick them up their butt. Excuse me. But you know, yeah, like it, when yeah. someone's doing graphics on MS Paint in between tweets and Facebook <laughs> posts and trying to organize people coming out to the thing and also fighting three MPs, the last thing they need <laughs> is people going, Oh, I don't like that litter. And you know, I understand. I don't and, know. Um, that's just, I suppose, you get used to it because that's like the, the Austrian way or the German, you know, they, they're, they're kind of they want things to be perfect or look perfect. So I kind of, but. Yeah. Does it, Did they I'm offer to do it though? This is what I'm interested in. Are these people that criticise, are they offering to do it? Because that's the no, thing. I don't think they're, then, they're all working, and I'm always at working, you know. Hmm. But I mean, it it, it, well, it it did annoy me and stuff. But I I just it did make me think about that. Yeah, it's not worth it, you know, to fight like because the cause is bigger than. me or my mm. ego or how I mm. feel or it's bigger than that you know mm. and I find um, one of the problems I'm very sarcastic because I do feel like you know you get to the point where you told people that Trump was going to win and <sighs> he wins and yeah okay it was not really a great prize <laughs> and then you you said like Russiagate was fake and no one believes you and they just think you're crazy and you know you say oh this chemical weapons thing this is fake oh here's the proof you know oh it's not in the media <laughs> you know you're constantly presented with this kind of reality of life which is completely mirror world to what's going on out there so it makes you bash your head repeatedly yeah. um but also the other people that have got to the place where they're doing the promoting from there they, they've also been attacked and they've also probably had their own um issues don't you agree you know <laughs> straight out of the jatrid you know playbook you know we've denied the strike the grade to see you know just break apart these movements just by putting that little bit in and people they know exactly what you're your points of uh, pain are and they'll just push on them um, and it's easy to get sarcastic and also start talking at a million miles an hour 
and, and expect everyone to be onto the same wavelength as you are <laughs> because you spend so long speaking to other activists so you think the whole world's yeah. like that this is what the silo is doing to everyone and the only comfort is that it's doing to them too <laughs> All right. Well, um, I was wondering whether we should share any video or something like that to feed it out with, or should I just do let the light in or would anyone else like to say any more? Patrick, you were still talking and I interrupted you. You've gone again. So maybe unless someone else wants to say more, um, Debs, you're still there, but you're not speaking up at the moment. Um, so what do you think, Joe? Should we play a video I, and yeah, we can lead have a out? Musical interlude and see if anyone, um, Okay. Um, last, uh, I'm still yeah, here. last request. Oh, you're still there. Yay. Sorry, can, Patrick. I do have a habit of breaking in and, and then go off in, on a tangent. I'm sorry. sorry, sorry I'm not the perfect no. interviewer. Sorry. That's all good. Yeah, so I wanted to hear from Ilvi because I think what you are thinking is it's only you and it's not Patrick. It's Melbourne. It's Sydney. It's okay, Mexico. Okay. It's London. <laughs> it's These same techniques are used around the, the world. Same to techniques. The and it's so frustrating. So don't listen to it. And don't think that the person you're hearing the terrible thing from, the negative thing from, they might not be the bad person. <laughs> this is what I keep on trying to get through to people is that it's not necessarily that person. It's what they're being whispered somewhere or manipulated into thinking. Yeah. Someone, someone sped them some disinfo and they're just spreading it on. Mm without knowing screens we can if you want patrick you can take people through some stuff and share your screen if you want but i think your resolution is quite low i don't know how that works with no, I'm screens. Okay. Oh, yeah? I'm okay. i have no idea about a video to show uh, okay. maybe maybe the last video we make for these uh, ah, yes follow little thing yes that's this a great idea i'll do end. that then i okay. say thank you for having me and um, I hope everything works out fine and we can uh, work effectively in future. And I think we still have to keep on doing this online, though. I think we've got to do it, even if it's we've got to pretend that it's not going to change, but also pretend that we might be able to be back out there on the 18th of May. Mm. But I doubt it. But yeah. Mm. Um, I was hoping to get action for Assange on because those guys are amazing. They're storming out. And there's Steve from Slow News Day, who's awesome. He's got the most wicked humor. If you want to see a funny tweet on politics, it's great. Um, and Andrew, who was in the Sydney um, protest too, Andrew Zygman. Um, Taylor Hudak, who's doing an amazing job of being a um, very, very... Um, reliable and believable um, media personality for Julian, which is what we need, someone who knows what they're doing as a professional. Yeah, look, this is gonna be a real good test if I can actually achieve this because I- so, There's a, a GoFundMe campaign for the Anything to Say sculpture you definitely all know about. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. And you say that there's someone working on um, a Chelsea Manning update for her new six. Ah, is this coming through? Can you hear the music? No. Um, go share screen and make sure you tick the share sound um, button. Okay.
That was really great. <laughs> Doesn't it make you feel good?